What's up, everybody? Welcome to Hot Takes. It is I, Vaporwave Hello. DJ, Young Shiro, and my cohort. Yells Vaporwave. Lipstick, Christopher Smith. Good to meet you. <laughs> Vaporwave DJ musician, Skeleton Lipstick. How you guys doing? We're glad to have you guys, guys back for season four. We got a very special guest for you guys tonight, an OG from the Vaporwave scene, future funk rocker, one of the earliest pre-proto-Vaporwave personalities in the scene, active on Tumblr under that name, to be with us tonight. So we're incredibly excited to, to, to let you guys talk to Brent, to get to know Brent better. And <clears throat> before we get started with that, I want to just ask you guys to keep it keep it real with me in chat about whether it looks or sounds good. Uh, we are simultaneously recording and broadcasting on a new rig, so let me know if audio volumes need to be changed or if something doesn't look right. Um, first things first, brand new artwork for Season 4, courtesy of Crystal Eternal. Hell yeah, my girl, we commissioned last guest from Season 3 to do the background... Yeah. Artwork and an entire overlay along with a brand new um, logo. And they just understood the assignment. They just hit it right out of the park. <clears throat> um, oh, absolutely. The background is slowly morphing gradient. It's not a static gradient, but you probably can't tell it. It's subtly moving. And then, of course, Skelly and I have these. It's yeah, like a little bit of motion. It's, in, it's a GIF it? or GIF, you know, depending. We got the chat GIF. box rendered up on the top left corner. Hopefully, it's not very big, but hopefully that looks and sounds okay. Roj, holy shit. A $50 donation? God damn, dude. Oh God. Thank you. Wow. Well, now we have our, our Streamlabs fucking... There we go. Thank you, buddy. Nothing we doesn't just, go back into the show. We had our Podbean and Streamlabs hit at the same like week, so thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, no, thank you so much. I want to run through the commands really quick, everybody. Um... We've got the mainstays, like, uh, they all start with exclamation points. So exclamation point Skelly will, will bring up Skeleton Lipstick's uh, socials. Um, uh, exclamation point Shiro brings up mine. And exclamation point, um, fuck it, is it hot takes? No, nope, I don't remember which one it is that brings up ours, damn it, whoops. No, I think it's follow. Yeah, it's follow. <clears throat> um, exclamation point Discord. You can join our public community Discord server. We have a lot of fun in there. We get to know each other. We support each other. You know, some scraps happen every now and then, but most of the, most of the time things go really well. And then, of course, we got all kinds of arguments, debates, and geek out sessions for you to take part in. It's a warm community, in my opinion. Um, and then, of course, exclamation point Spotify. Guess what? We got a bunch of playlists that are um, that are custom made for hot takes from former guests. In fact, if you tuned in before we started, there's a new one courtesy of Vincent Remember. And um, what? Yeah, yeah Vincent, Vincent Remember Vincent, did one. one. It's some pretty yeah, cool gotta, now. Right, some of the tracks. This week. You really should. Yeah, we got to update our, our official playlist at some point soon. Uh, if you're still doing the What's Skelly listening to. <laughs> I haven't done that in two years. <laughs> oh, man, you got to update that shit. So, anyways, Vincent Remember, no. a couple of the tracks he wanted were not on Spotify, but for the most part, some good stuff. A lot of Dream Pop and Shoegaze. Uh, definitely check it out. Um, and then, of course, if you uh, if the spirit moves you, as Skelly would say, exclamation point, donate. You, could do it, you don't have to donate $50 like Roche Corp did. That was phenomenal. But any little bit helps. It goes towards commissioning people, goes towards equipment upgrades. Get Skeleton Lipstick a professional audio setup, please. Any donations uh, help. I'm going to have it for next week. <laughs> have it for next week. Just kidding. Obviously, some things need to be fixed, like the intro screen said, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're not doing 9 p.m. anymore. We're doing 8 p.m., guys. Sorry to our P, uh, our Pacific Time brethren, but we're getting Sorry, old, man. We got early mornings on Tuesday, so we're doing 8 to 10 now. Yep. Got to update that at some point. <clears throat> um, Got some new commands. Check this out. Did you guys know we put out a compilation? Exclamation point comp allows you to check out Hot Takes Volume 1, a compilation that we put out featuring tracks from prior guests at a uh, minimum $1 donation. And if you donate a dollar, guess what? You get a bunch of bonus tracks from the community. We got tracks by Strip Silence, uh, Gamma Flow, uh, <laughs> Georgie1802, and some other people whose names I'm forgetting that are probably going to be sad, but I'm sorry. Uh, just stuff you don't want to miss. Um, so that's exclamation point comp. Go check it out. Every dollar donated goes towards the Palestine Children's Relief Fund. That's a beautiful incense. It also supports a good there. cause. So. It does, man. That, you know, some 
children need help out there, man. Yeah, KJ Valium had a track. I'm sorry, KJ. It was a great track. Exclamation point, Vapor Aid. Did you know we did a live stream event? Technically, we just hosted it. Quiz put on the live stream event. Curated it. Handpicked all the people that performed. And it was an excellent did an excellent it's job. It was a huge success, too. And it was a huge success, and it also benefited a great cause. So he goes, oh, yeah, we got a $1,000 goal. I said, buddy, you're going to smash that within the first hour. And he did. Excellent. And I think at the end of the night, we had like $4,700 donated to the PCRF. Shout out quiz and shout out all the participants and donors. It literally, literally took the goal and built a skyscraper on top of it. It got so high. A derelict mega tower of a goal. A derelict mega tower. Wow, good one. That was quick. So if you want, even though um, Luxury Noise, thankfully, uh, was able to take care of some parts during um, Keith Rankin's set where he used a bunch of um, like Studio Ghibli footage and got us like <laughs> taken down. Luxury Noise thanks, covered that Keith. up. Yeah, thanks, thanks a Keith. lot, Keith. Mm, it's a phenomenal yeah. set. You should watch it. There's a, no, there's a section where it's blacked out, but the audio's there, and if you hit exclamation point Vaporade, you can watch the whole stream on YouTube. And I think the chat's rendered in it, too. I could be wrong, but I think it is. Yeah, I think Quiz had it on screen. So, uh, last thing, exclamation point shirt. Guess what? B Fant designed some shirts with the Vaporade logo. First of all, B Fant designed the entire thing, the Vaporade logo, the poster, the lineup. B Fant has designed one of the previous uh, hot takes, um, you know, uh, backgrounds. B Fant is one of our so favorite first artists she, in the scene. She did. She designed the. She designed the first one for us, right? Yes, yes. I, I believe they go by they, they now. They designed the first. But they did a phenomenal job, and can't thank them enough for all the hard work they've done. Within and without the community. Um, so if you hit exclamation point shirt, you can still buy a shirt and you can it'll have vapor on it and it'll have all the people on the lineup on the back. I got mine, Lux got hers. We like them a lot, very comfortable, very beautiful looking, and they're available in a variety of different colors. Ah, uh, I think that about sums it up. Before we bring on our guest, uh, we got about five minutes to just kind of wrap, but I want to remind everybody that we don't do any sort of racism, sexism, homophobia, or xenophobia on hot takes. It's okay to argue and debate. In fact, I encourage you to punch up if you want to talk shit about Daft Punk, Kanye West, whatever, Taylor Swift, please do it. Just no no shit talking, indie advent, luxury elite, Mr. Hustine. Just keep those people's names out of your mouth. Be nice. Um, maybe we can take these five minutes to talk about what we've done in the four months since hot takes. What have you been up to? Me? Yes, you. Uh, well, I have this beautiful incense burner. That's what everybody's asking what's happening right now. It's just, uh, that's one thing. Yeah, I they are. Do. I've been kind of <laughs> rambling. Is that uh, one of those, so like... I... Sorry, not important. Okay. What have you been up to? <clears throat> okay, well, as for me, um, well, I have been hard at work at the next Skeleton Lipstick album. It is officially finished and mastered now, and I have the, the cover art completed for it. Like, all the stuff, the loose ends are being tied up. It's outstanding. It's mastered by Fire Tools. Um, they did Hell a phenomenal yeah. job on it. Um, Secret School is handling the um, Ooh. Uh, art direction for it. And I meet and uh, Rich, my photographer for Terminally Chill, and the man who took the only photograph of all the artists from Electronic on one. You know, that famous I remember that. that. Floats around with everybody in it. Also taken by Rich. He did. He helped me with the. Uh, a cover photo as well, taking some shots. I uh, had a little studio up in my place, and we set up a, a photo shoot for that. It's pretty powerful imagery. Um, and Shut the up, label, I'm only going to announce the label in this chat listing right here, but I'm not going to really uh, say it officially, but you guys can hear it. It's going to be on the new um, imprint from Geometric Lullaby Hush Tones, where they're putting the creepier Ooh. stuff. Oh, so it'll be released on that. Did you say the creepier um, stuff? Yeah, it's like the signal wave stuff. I think I just heard a thing. cheer from the other room. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's the, uh, the imprint label that's going to be handling some of the more uh, obscure-sounding music. And it is certainly an obscure-sounding album, but I think you guys are going to like it if you like Burial, if you like Clams Casino, if you like uh, a little bit of some... Ooh. Even uh, even some tobacco vibes, you're going to like it. Ooh, that sounds eclectic as fuck. And I know I got a little very bit of a... Very personal, is a deeply personal album to me. But we'll talk about that another time. 
you know what though, man? I will say, you know, you caught me at a point last night when I was very inebriated, but I got a quick listen and I was blown away by by what I heard. And it's such a cool new direction for your sound. And I'm I'm very excited to listen to it wall to wall. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Clearly you've sat on it a long time and, and really let it kind of <laughs> simmer. For about a year, mm. over a year. Over yeah. a year. Yeah. Well well it shows, man. I, I I was very much a fan of what I what I that little bit that I heard. Well, you know what? I guess that about sums well, that doesn't sum it up totally, but um, I'll just say my adventures over the last few months have entailed Lots and lots of live shows. I won't go into incredible detail because we want to bring our, our illustrious guest on here as soon as possible. But I played Rose Corps. Oh, Secret Schools, oh, uh, schools in chat. What's up, buddy? No, <clears throat> Secret Schools <clears throat> mentioned. What was the Secret Schools mentioned? Uh, he he's design. He's doing the um, uh, art direction. For the he's album. doing the art direction for the new Skelly album. It's back to me. Shout out Roche Corp for, and Vincent Van Gogh for putting together I2K. It went off like a goddamn bomb. Uh, so many people were there. I had so much fun, even if I had to DJ until 2 a.m., which is probably normal oh, really? for you, but yeah. Um, oh, I, I, I do round robin sets. I only do 30 minutes. Right, that is true. That is true. We, we, we switch off. The same way yeah. that Fantacat would do it. That is true. Shout out Fantacat. I played uh, Crystal Nostalgia. No, I'm sorry. Crystal Nostalgia, Scooby Kaiju, where, where and All Hell Breaks right Loops event. I played Nostalgia Lounge. Sorry, Crystal Eternal. Crystal Eternal booked me, and I played a deconstructed club set that you would have loved. I played two Blank Mass songs, Ooh, including our favorite Silent one, uh, Silent, Silent Treatment. Treatment. No, I'm sorry. I didn't play Silent Treatment. Treatment. I played the last track. That's a, a tough one. It's a tough one to play. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, and then, of course, I played... Um, fuck, where else did I play? I played Vapor Space. Vapor Space St. Louis. Shout out Emerson yeah. and Tim. Shout out Ronnie. Yeah, shout out Ron is no longer involved with Vapor Space, unfortunately, but he's he's still around. You know he what? still supports. It's, it's, you know what though? It's it's nice for him to get a break. He gave so much. You know what I mean? Right. Man, I right. can't I can't fault him. And I know what it's like to run events. Oh, dude. I, well, I mean, even when I was like, hey, you want to go back? I've, and... I've been there. I'm there currently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last thing I'll say before we bring on our guest: uh, very small run of Young Shiro shirts got made. Um, I think about Whoa, half of them are sold. Of are you serious? All right, just DM one? me. Yeah, I don't have any left. I've been waiting for years. Yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, sh- yes, right. yes, DM like, me. Shout really? out to, to okay, Peace. I will. Timothy Azareth Morrison, uh, Ryan and Noel in uh, in St. Louis helped me out with that. And, of course, DS Dude designed the, the iconic uh, Final Fantasy VII Meteor with the vinyl record. That's enough about me. Um <clears throat> Let's bring on Future Funk Rocker. You guys excited to meet one of the earliest, earliest personalities in the scene? Because I sure am. I feel like it was a great choice for the beginning of season four. Brent Grant, go ahead and unmute yourself, brother. Yo. Oh. Hey, how's it going? Uh, let's get that screensaver wow. off. Oh, there's the still. And God damn it. There he is. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Okay. A little I rusty there. Snip. Well, we, we welcome you to the show, man. I uh, don't even really know Sorry where to, to start. Here. You know, obviously, one of our favorite things to do is bring on not just up and comers, but like OG people to the scene. <clears throat> and uh, and shout out, you were actually—I was, was believe it was your idea, Skelly, to bring on Brent. So let me not steal your thunder. Oh no, not at all, not at all. We're gonna oh. start the first hour with a series of questions, courtesy of Skeleton Lipstick, so we can get to know our guest. Please hold all questions to the top of the hour. And at 9 p.m. sharp, you guys can start firing away. Okay. Go ahead. Good. Let's go. Let's start. Yeah, let's go. get started. Brent, it's a pleasure to have you here, my friend. How are you today? I'm good, man. It's uh, I haven't done an interview in like 13 years or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> what an honor. <laughs> yeah, How man. fun. Oh. <laughs> what an honor. Yeah, so yeah. We get some cool, honest questions. Well, the first thing I wanted to know is basically... Um, how did you kind of get started in music? Um, it probably had, music? Well, it probably has to do a lot with like my family. Like my my parents were really in in the music, but like mo- mostly my dad. My dad was like the big, you know. What kind of music was he into? Classic rock, but like he, that was like his nice. favorite thing. Nice. But like, but the one thing that I always appreciated about him is that like he liked 
so many different genres of music you know what i mean like he wasn't just yes. set into one genre he was like you know he liked reggae he liked soul you know what i mean he liked Let's... new wave like he was all he was dabbling in everything so like i learned a he lot kind of yeah he set me um, up yeah that's sick you know shout yeah. out dad yeah that's R. interesting so r.i.p <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, but that is homies. interesting that when yeah. we have people in our, I mean, so that's the thing too, right? It's like sometimes we have people in our lives that, you know, they're close to us, but they're they're basically, uh, so we associate them with one style of music. I know that my parents were mostly just classic rock. So it wasn't until I met some other people who, you know, listened to multiple things that I started, I started thinking about the idea of, oh, genres can be mixed together. There's different ways to look at music. Well, it's really nice that your dad was the first person to introduce that to you. Because you get that kind of lesson early, it sort of sticks with you, I guess. And yeah. Was there a first type of music that you connected with? Um, like, what were you listening to in high school or even middle school? What you know? What actually? Well, stopped. I can. Wait, wait, well, wait, wait, come on. What's the first music you connected with? Um, uh, the first, uh, probably grunge, because that's what I was like. I was in elementary school when all of that was going on, so that, like, you know, I had like a bowl cut. <laughs> like more rusty and shit. <laughs> you had the you know George I mean? like third, fade. Third, third grade, you know what I mean? What was that? It was probably like 93 or something like that. 94. Yeah, no, no. I, 95, I, I, 95 was really the year that I started looking for music on my own because of skateboarding and skate videos and how diverse oh. skate videos were and how good. Like, I heard Cockatoo Twins when I was in fifth grade. That shit blew my mind, dude. Like, that's a thing about people who are older, I'm sorry, younger than us. I'm a little bit older than you, but I'm still from around that same same age range. And like it was a those skate videos, like skateboarding was intrinsically associated with like punk rock or grunge music or just rebellion in general. Shoe gaze. Like, That's how I got in the shoe gaze was because of yeah, you would hear like slush, yeah. cockatoo twins. You know what I mean? You would hear those bands like especially in like the there's this hookup smoothie Asian goddess that. I remember my brother came home from school with that one day and like first song in it's cockatoo twins like my hand was like completely blown so uh, i think it i thought it was always such a cool way to discover this kind of music through the skate videos and i don't i don't know i don't think it's that way anymore i mean people don't discover it through that that route anymore but that's like no, a very it's all like algorithm it's all like algorithm like here you go it's like oh you like this band here's a here's some similar bands you know what i mean like finding yeah. out music it's like wait like skate videos that's if I, if I never skateboarded i probably wouldn't ever made music i yeah it's it's so kind it's really sad that you get kind of handed things nowadays but back then you had to kind of go out of your way and be rebellious and kind of enter into a subculture in order to gain access. You know, that was the thing too. Yeah. Was Buying like to, get, an to get to the cool music, you had to kind yeah. of work, you had to kind of maneuver into subcultures, whether yeah. that be like, the, you know, you know, people saying up basement shows or skateboarding, uh, or you had to get involved in some kind of subculture to get access to the interesting music. And today, you're right, it just kind of gets fed to you. So it's really sad. I feel like that excitement that's like very palpable is kind of gone. Like, you know, it's, it's not the same, just get it handed to you on the computer. I mean, I don't want to judge. It's, yeah. you know, it's not, my, not my place to, but I, I thought it was cool to be able to, I'd have to walk outside and meet these kids who were skateboarding and I'd watch the go to their house and I'd watch, I guess, I don't know, a CKY video or whatever. And like, you know, they, they'd show me something and I'd be like, oh, what? and then they show me something else. And then they would show me their CD collections, you know what I mean? And then somebody would be into shoegaze, and one of the older kids would be into shoegaze, and then you'd all of a sudden have like a ride album on your on your playlist. And um, it was just a very visceral way to get into music because you engaged in a culture to get to it. Yeah, um, I was like brought up in the heightened of uh, CDs being like the thing to do, you know what I mean? Do you ever go... Shout out. I still buy them from Goodwill. I bet you never... still buy them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because you're never like, gonna go out. You get in a dead, you get in a dead zone. You drive around. You get in the dead zone. The music shuts off. You know the CD. It's still rolling. You know. Can everybody hear <laughs> me? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I had no. Nah, you good. Rig kind of like froze you, for a second. You used to go to the. Um, somebody say in like, chat if they can hear me. Thank you. You go sorry. to like the bargain bin CDs where they were selling them for like two to five dollars and just see if you could find like a hidden treasure there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I never stopped using cassette. Like, I was always rocking cassette because you can just dub mixes of stuff, you know, making mm -hmm. mixes of CDs on the cassettes. 
got the Walkman on on the bus. What a lost art, huh? Like making like the mixtapes, you know what I mean? Like yeah. actually having to stop, hit hit the two buttons to hit record. Yeah. There's something very romantic about that. Oh my that, fuck, you know I forgot I mean? about the two buttons. Holy shit. How did I Playing forget about that? <laughs> oh. you say it is, I it's not okay that, it's that like, like that well, erased uh, itself from my memory. Uh, erased itself. You recorded over it. Um, so I oh really my God, do enjoy anything up. that creates ritual around music. And that concept of putting the tapes together is like a, it's, it's ritual. It's almost like a form of witchcraft, just mixing everything together. You know what I mean? And then witchcraft. you're, you're. A little like a bit, man. Potion. And then, like, you ever like, and then you get to, the, and then like, you get to the next song, and you can hear when you like hit the stop button, and it's like the last chord of the guitar is like, like it stretches itself out because you just hit oh, the yeah. stop button, and then the new one comes in, and it sort of like fades back in. It's like a brew. It's crazy, and it's a shame that we don't have that as much anymore. We have, they have a kid, kids, you know, younger people who have other things. But, yeah, um, I feel it's, like it's, it's come back. It's come back. I feel pretty big in the last ten years or so. It's it's made a, people buy LPs and cassettes again. You know, just like you know, I feel like I feel like CDs or people are going to be on CD wave. Or, you know, at some point, yeah. Dude, I Digital go on Discogs and see like the price of some CDs, and you're just like, holy shit, dude! Like three fifty for a fucking CD. Like, whoa, dude. <laughs> it's a fucking they're CD. out there. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, especially like the early two thousands down tempo stuff is goes for. for cool. Oh, you mean the barber beats? Yeah, definitely goes for a lot. You, the physical media stuff it always goes in waves. There are periods when it's more popular and periods when it's less popular. I feel like we're entering into a more popular era, though. I think we are. We just got out of a little bit, a bit of a dry gulch over the last few years. I mean, obviously, I it's like... really big in the two thousand tens. Then I feel yeah. like, like the it's crazy two- though. Like. You used to go in the pawn store and see like PS1 games for like a dollar, and now they're like 200 bucks. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, dude, are you talk- the vintage game market is broken, bro. It's like I a saw record. a box, like- mint and box copy of Golden Sun for Game Boy Advance at a local game store for like $700. Yeah. <sighs> Skelly, aren't you glad you don't play video games? <laughs> I, Now's yeah, a great time to I not would, be a gamer, it would God be damn it. just another thing for me to have to worry about wanting to buy. Uh, I love, and as I mentioned before, I love video games. I appreciate the artistry. I'll be the first person to cheer people along playing them, but I, 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 I don't have the, have the patience. But hold on. Back to Brent. I, I want to know, so you're, you're in elementary school, so you're getting an early introduction to sort of rebellious m- music. You're getting an early introduction to kind of breaking rules when it comes to making music. And even yeah. prior to that, you had an early introduction to the idea of listening to different types of music, which is like, <clears throat> to tell you the truth, you know, you're not that much, you're, you know, you're younger than me, but you're around the same age. And you know that kind of back in the day, there wasn't too much of, um, you know, people kind of had a genre they listened to and that was it for a yeah. lot of people. I mean, so the fact that your dad kind of put that thought into your mind early is that probably did give you an advantage above other people. Yeah, he, so, that's a good point. You yeah. remember, like a lot of people would be like, oh, no, I only listen to like, you know, it's Nirvana and Smashing Pumpkins. And yeah, I went to school with and, a lot of people that were like, I only listen to country. And you're like, oh, shit. Oh, oh no. <laughs> whereabouts? <laughs> and if you don't mind me, I got a, whereabouts. I, uh, I grew up in Maryland. Um, oh, shit. Okay. Maryland. It's like that in Maryland? Like how close yeah, to Baltimore? Yeah, I grew up 45 minutes. Oh, that's not bad at all. From, okay. from there and 40, like 45 to like D.C. It's like a Sick. triangle. It's like Baltimore, Frederick, D.C. Mm-hmm. Right. I grew up in the like the rural part of Frederick County. So it was like my Shit. high school was built like in a cornfield. You know what I mean? Dude, like, there are country the, fans it, everywhere, oh my you guys. God. Outside yeah, of yeah. every city. It there's country fans in Central California. They're all over the place. I, I mean, I, country music something that I learned to appreciate, like, post-ironically as I got older because it's fucking hilarious. Like, it, it's all serious, but it's like, I think it's funny as shit, so, like, I love I, it. Now, <laughs> I used to be like, I used to be like, oh, country when I was younger, but now I'm like, oh, I, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's funny because, like, the, every country song is like, yeah, it's deathly serious, and then, like, fucking uh, chorus is always a punchline. I might be horrible at most things, but I'm good yeah. at doing bad. Like yeah. everything is like a fucking joke. It comes to the yeah. goddamn. That's how you have a hit. Like, and every time I put it on the country station, I'm like, yeah, they came up with another one. 
good at doing bad? Like, when are they going to run out of these folksy expressions? Uh, oh, yeah, oh my stuff God. now, the stuff now they make is so funny. It's like trap country or whatever. With, has oh, like my God, trap stop beat. it. <laughs> Fucking like oh God, Bastille yeah, and 21 Pilots on a country song. You have to understand that country music is usually stop about clap, 10 hee-haw. years behind mm-hmm. regular pop music. So, like, if you listen to a country station, it's the way that they sound is like what pop music sounded like 10 to 15 years prior. So, like, that's kind yeah. of like... I mean, I feel like as a musician, like. you can, you got to listen to it all because then you, 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 you there's one element that's of it. There. You can, you can be, you can be like, this is sick. Like, if you fade everything out and there's just this one part, like, it's this is cool. You know what I mean? Like, you could oh, yeah. find, if a musician, you could find something sick, pretty sick in any oh, song. Oh, I mean, like... No shade against the concept of writing tight pop songs, which is what country is. Like everything yeah. fits together pretty smoothly. The syncopation works. The the fucking you know it's not my style of comedy, but the the little punchlines they put in the witticisms they add in it works for their audience and it's yeah. it's competent. It's competent. I'm more writing. into you know when I mean? Garth Brooks was Chris Gaines. I oh think, shit! Think, yeah, when he had was... the, the he had the soul <laughs> yeah, patch the, with the yeah the, he, the, he, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was that like nineties like, country? Here's my was that dude? He, 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 sat, he was like Babyface was like Gaines. helping him. Babyface was like helping him write songs. He sounded like uh, Babyface. Baby Babyface is a genius too. Baby oh yeah, it sound it sounds like R and B. Damn it! Babyface was helping produce it. Must have been dank. It's fire! It's so good. So good. Really, we need to talk more about baby face in general in life. That's, oh, yeah. that's my that's my New Year's resolution for this year. I mean that's what uh, I was more about baby sampling face. early when our early vaporwave stuff. You know, that's hell. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. Mentioned. We'll get we're gonna yeah. get that. Yeah. I wanna talk about Chris Gaines a little bit more first of all. Dude, it's so <laughs> good. I watched an episode of Saturday Night Live where Garth Brooks hosted and the musical guest was Chris Gaines. And he was like, Chris Gaines will be here later, guys. I'm like, yeah, we know it's you. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, we like you, so we'll, we'll play along. I, anyway. I think there's like a VH1 into the music or whatever about well, him. Who's Chris, the music, who's Chris Gaines? Chris Gaines. Yeah. Chris Gaines is an alter ego that Garth Brooks came up with at the height of his popularity in the mid '90s. That was a soft rock alter ego who had like, oh, no way. Of, like noir, had like a noirish backstory to him. Damn. He even made like an ABC made-for-TV movie about Chris Gaines. I know what? a lot about things. I don't know what to tell you. He's like I know the Cal Chuchesta of the '90s. Knowledge to have. Cal Chuchesta of oh God. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure, he's Cal Chuchesca, exactly. Of the kinda 90s. Like yeah, kind of, kind of like that, Thanks for filling me but in, they... fellas. I live under a rock. No, there's no reason Lux is probably there like... This is the first and last time that we'll probably ever discuss Chris Gaines on Hot Takes, so, you know, I'm just gonna get, get to all that pissed now that yeah. I'm talking to my friend. Um, yeah. Anyway, I want to get off... I want to stop talking about Chris Gaines for just a little bit, <laughs> and let's get back to you, Brent. Uh, yeah. So... Anyhow, when it's okay, so now you're listening. Did you play in any bands in in high school or middle school? Um, play any other bands? I didn't. I didn't start anything until 2002. I was in like 10th okay. grade, 16. Uh, uh, I can't remember which one I got at first. I can't remember if I got the guitar first. I think I might have got the four track. My dad just randomly came home with the four track one day and was like, "Here you go, boy. Like, here's check this Please. out. You know what I mean?" Nice. And. Uh, yeah like i was doing like mostly just like gets with that and then i got a guitar but like i made noise music for a long time sick from like you made years. noise music yeah like noise music? no no i was just making it like that was what i was oh, yeah. first doing like by like 2000 from 2002 to 2004, I was just making like some noise ass shit, like feedback stuff. Like I didn't know how to, I didn't wait, know how to tune. For two, for t- wait, 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 stop. For two years, you were just making noise music and you Yeah, was, yeah. Like how I you used the guitar? Yeah, like I didn't even know how to awesome. tune it. I didn't care. I, didn't, <laughs> well, that's I was sick. like, wow, like that's I sick. just wanted it to be like, I didn't want to be one of those guys that was like, I can play Led Zeppelin songs or whatever. Like I wanted to do something like completely avant garde, like, left field did you have like, any anybody you listen to that you're like this is kind of like what i'm trying to sound like or you just doing this on your own no i didn't really get any musical direction until i stopped making that kind of music in like 2005 i went to go see mogwai and this band growing Fuck yeah. 
growing. Yeah, open yeah, curtain. growing. They were Down up with like fuck buttons. And uh, I'm not familiar with them, dude. It was just growing is awesome. Playing, two guitars, huge full stack amps, making some of the best, prettiest ambient music I've ever heard in my entire life. And I was already like listening yeah, to like apparently. Harold Budd and Eno when I was like, hell 19. yeah. So like they helped me like kind of like formulate a sound so and then that that's how i started making that would have been the music. mr beast magawai tour no or was it the hawk is howling tour? it was the it's the mr beast that's tour, my favorite yeah. album of theirs man yeah it's good i, I really but, liked it it was that a badass when show. i was younger when i was younger oh, thank you Bert. Show Holy Albert, shit, yeah. shout out yeah so yeah like going to see like me and my friend were like damn we want to sound like growing <laughs> like that's, yeah, growing is that's badass. Funny. You'd love them, Skelly. Well, that kind of brings me to actually like a question I'd asked you earlier, but I wasn't able to get the answer because I had to get, kind of go through the rest of. I had to go. I had to always go through your musical history first before I get the answer to this. Usually with everybody, which is like, what's the band that like you heard that like kind of switches in you and kind of changed everything? And it sounds like that it was, was growing. It was definitely them, like for it sounds sure. Sounds about right. Man, it's it was so. There's always some beautiful. band that. Yeah, like I'll never forget that. Like. That changed my life, and then like me and my buddy started making music that was pretty similar to that, and then I was doing it by myself, and then I started like I was already doing this thing called sperm whales, and uh, I just changed it into making like droney ambient guitar stuff, and and then uh, my friend had a more popular band than me, um, and he was like taking me on tour with him every time, so I started touring for that project just by myself, which was pretty sick. Hard, crazy, yeah. So doing like East Coast, really East Coast tours, yeah. I miss, I miss doing that a lot. Um, that was, I did that probably from like 2008 to 2011 or something like that. Badass, dude. Yeah. Did you ever go overseas? No, we just would do like Massachusetts to like Georgia and all the states Sick. in between, like that. Because hey, so, you did that? You didn't? You did this after high school? Yeah, this was uh, like a year after high school. So you graduated uh, high school and then went right into touring down the East Coast? Well, it was like a couple years after. It was like 2008 to 2011. Uh, we we did it like three times. Three time, no, I didn't go to college. You just decided uh, to be a rock star instead. Um, yeah, it's probably the worst mistake I've ever made. Damn. <laughs> I wish my art teacher would have been like, dude, you should get in the business, man. You're going to be broke as shit. You're going to be uh, fucking right. hate life. <laughs> Yikes. That's um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, like my senior project for high school to graduate English 12 was I made an album with like really? my friends. Sick yeah. as fuck. That like, was practicum. Like, yeah, it was like. That was like 70% of my grade or some shit. And that was like the only class I had to take to graduate high school. So I just like made an album. <laughs> That's and a liar. And said I donated the money and bought weed with it or something like a, you know, 17 <laughs> year old would do. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So you did the, the, this, this, uh, what was, what was your band called? Or what was your act called? Sperm Whales. Oh, sper oh, it's still sperm whales. I was How much does it go for on Discogs.com? Probably like five it. bucks. <laughs> you should. You just found it. That's awesome. Because I okay, was so you on... Kept the... Hmm? Go ahead. What are you saying? Oh, because I, I feel like the only thing that would probably be worth any money would be the seven the, the seven openings of the head tape just because it came out on the same label as the Chuck Persons Echo Jams tape. Oh, no fucking way. That's so bad. Oh, no fucking way. Whoa, Really? Yeah, the games, oh. the Spend the Night with Games came out, was the tape before my tape came out, and then Whoa. the Chuck Persons, and then the Chuck Persons tape came out like two tapes after mine. Okay, so you like heard it on Hot Takes. Them. Crazy. Told you guys. It's crazy. The, 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 the connection, I, I wasn't even aware of that connection. That's crazy. That's yeah, so maybe. Yes. That's fucking phenomenal. So there's like always been this like connection with hypnagogic ambient music, new age music with the vaporwave like because those those similar those artists make that music too that like it's all mod podge blended into each yep. other you know what i mean yeah. it's still the, it's it's not done the same way but it's still done the same way with the same intention you know what i mean it still has the same intentions behind it and it's still the same 
you know, there was like a whole thing where like, I remember like Boards of Canada being interviewed and asked like, well, what's a band that you guys consider yourselves like? And they're like, oh, kind of like My Bloody Valentine, but not really, but we're sort of the same. Like they just, they, there's like a spiritual connection with it all. Yeah, like, I mean, especially with dudes like Daniel Lopatin being involved with like the Sorry, Nobody person. Here video and uh, the Chuck Persons thing and then Ferraro with Farside Virtual and stuff like that. Yeah, like, the memory, the memory vague line. stuff, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it all, it's all like, a, there's so many, di now there's all these different micro genres of Vaporwave and stuff, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. So Yeah, okay. it's really morphed a lot. But you're doing sperm yeah. whales. How, when did you and when did you stop doing sperm whales and 2011 what you um basically really what happened is that yeah 2011 i did that from 2005 to 2011 um i just wanted to not go by sperm whales anymore i tapped out but like i got i got pretty fucked up like i i was i was doing drugs like i got really bad into drugs um Basically, from 2011 to 2016, I was fucking, you know, Damn. pretty fucked, fucked up. So, like, you know, and my, so, like, my whole early vaporwave shit, I was just fucking her heroined out the whole day. Really? Damn, that's Wait, yeah. rough, you're, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, this is very interesting. Now I need to go back to listen to your old albums again, uh, because that's very interesting. You were doing all those albums while you were battling a drug addiction. Yeah, yeah, like I've on Crazy. on Wednesday I'll a be eight of years OG. clean off of that shit. Congratulations, man! Holy that's shit, huge. that's hard. That's Congratulations, homie. Do you mind so, that? Do you mind that we brought this up? I didn't. I no, know. I, I think it's All like right. part of me because, like, I mean, like, I that's why, like, I I felt like I never really took off, or people don't know who I am, is because like I was struggling through that whole part of my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. So it is still part of me, even though I don't want to it to be. You know what I mean? Like, no, no one wants to be known as a fucking drug addict. So, like, I don't fucking care. Like, it's my past. Like, I, I had a, like a good thing going, and I, and I fucked it up. So, like, the, you know, don't do drugs, kids. Yeah. You know? If I'm a, I'm a, like, this is why I should be a motivational speaker because that shit fucked my shit up. Like, I, I had a fucking tape out on the on Chuck per with Chuck Persons on the same label. Well, if, if you don't uh, mind me even... jumping in, you had told me in the pre-roll that you had a 20,000 follower Tumblr page. Yeah, I nuked it. I nuked yeah. it, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 a, so, that's like, a big loss. I, and I, look, I think the thing is that really quick, though, is that and Forever Online just, 90, uh, 98 just says, like, well, we, but we still have you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, the yeah. thing. Fat yeah. We still yeah, have yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm glad to be here, and I still, I still dabble with the vaporwave. You know, if you go to my YouTube, I'm still, you know, the last thing I upload is the Chris Gaines loop. <laughs> no shit. Oh, how appropriate. Shout it out Naoko like... Coed for all the um, links, by the way, and Luxury Elite. Thank you for <laughs> continually plugging uh, Brent's socials. Oh uh, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Lux. Um, yeah. So, like, you know, I was, you know, so. When I did that slow weather jams so I was video about in, in like what was that like 2012 or something like that? 2012, 2013, somewhere around that time. Yeah, yeah. I was, like I, I about what, when did that? When did you do that? Because that's how I first got to know who you. Were. Yeah, that that's how most people know me, and that's what most people are like. It, that's all they want from me is they're like, do me, I'll make so some more from weather. Me. <laughs> yeah, they're like always get these comments like, yo, more weather. Like, dude, like, more? Did you ever think you you get to a point in your career where people are like, we want more weather like, channels? Yeah, yeah. They're like, that's all they give a shit about. They're I thought like, that you were one of the first artists to actually kind of explore that sort of thing. Anyway, I, I, I mean, people say it's a bold thing, but I, I think I'm the first guy to do it. You know what I mean? Because like, I thought you were the first person to do it. Because eco virtual and all that, like even the bones weatherman track, like all that stuff came like a year. Oh man! After after me. So like you know what I mean. It's true. So, like I feel like I was a big influential part on the early on the early vaporwave scene. That, that part of the aesthetic of vaporwave that involves like the the, the 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 banality of channels that just repeat content over and over again with like the uh, elevator music in the background and like that, which it's so funny now that I'm talking to you and you're like and I was battling a heroin heroin was it heroin yeah pills or what. You were that make you like I'm battling a heroin addiction. This feels like 
you know, like, you know, being stuck in something, you know? Yeah. Hey, I mean, hey, it's perfect. interesting. I was going to say, we were losing volume to... from you, Brent, but thanks for getting back up on the mic. Yeah, yeah sorry. So sorry. I no, think that's no like apology an necessary. interesting way. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's going to be, it makes it even, there's more, it's, it makes it more interesting. It makes it interesting. It was already very interesting and now it makes it more interesting to understand what you were going through. And that well, this is like, this is what's the, what, this is what the outlet of your angst was this, you know what I mean? Well, it's crazy that the being in such like a terrible position in life, you know what I mean? The, the only way I could find comfort at the time was with the weather channel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because, uh, course, it, it was a huge that, part. Dude, not, dude, it was the, the weather channel was a huge yeah. part of my, of my adolescence, I would say, because it was always on, it was always playing the best jams. You know what I mean? The smoothest really? of jams. Yeah, because I would wake up. It, it snowed a lot in Maryland. You know what I mean? So you always wake up at like five a.m. to see if school's closed because you don't want to go. And and you know I, I would yeah. flip from not from the county channel to to the weather channel. You know, wow. and just like fascinating just weather on the eights. You know, always loved it. And the the animation back in like the late nineties, early two thousands was really cool looking. Oh, gifts that move a little bit. Yeah, oh, you know, it's really interesting because. Shower <laughs> Yeah, man. You answered the question before I even had a chance to ask you. Was that were you tapping into some nostalgia that made you feel comfort and safe? The time Absolutely. when you were maybe scared and losing. When you're in a time when you were maybe scared and losing control of yourself, you were tapping into something that made you feel safe and nostalgic, and that's where the art came from. And that's you answered the question before I had a chance to ask it. But if you want to elaborate, please do. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. It's just very, uh, you know, and. I read all those comments that I've gotten over the over the 10 years plus it's been on YouTube and like so many people connect with that like oh I remember this time like when I go to my grandparents and like they'd have the weather channel on like I'd wake up to it like at 3 a.m. like it's definitely the, the weather that that era is definitely like some 3 to 6 a.m. like you know time vibe. Yeah. You know, Brent, is crazy. there any chance you can turn yourself up a little bit on your end? Yeah. Oh, is that better? Yes, it's oh, way yes. better. Fun. Sorry, okay. you just okay. keep like losing volume little by little. Uh, it's but probably you're back. Like... No, you're you're good. And I hate to interrupt. I hate interrupting conversations, but we want everybody to hear sure. you. So, thank no, you. No, that's fine. You guys were no, talking about good. nostalgic hey. moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So oh, hold on. Let's just back up a tiny bit though for a second here. Okay. How did you discover and find yourself involved in Troy stuff? How did I get into it? Um, just being at the right place at the same time. Like, you know, that Truck Persons tape came out on the Curatorial Club. I found out about it really early. Um, you know, that nobody What's your initial did. reaction to it? I loved it immediately, dude, because I, I was like... I was partying and like it's per it's just like the slow down like I didn't there was a time for like probably like two years where like I didn't want to listen to anything at the normal speed I just want to listen to everything slow. <laughs> That's fucking like, cool uh, like pre vapor <laughs> wave. <laughs> yeah, just like because nice. I had this mix. I had this mix because the heaven can wait like the volume one two and three or yep, whatever. Heaven I really can wait like So I did like one called Meal Deal Volume One. It's not on SoundCloud anymore, but that was like. It was all Idolo disco music slowed down, probably in like the same form as those mixes. I just tried to replicate it. Um, you know, I was obsessed. You know, it is yeah. funny. You, you know, like spend the night with games and the Heaven Can Wait mixtape. They did literally just play their favorite songs and slow them down, like ten beats per minute, maybe pitch them down a yeah, little like bit. The, I want to say Calm Trues kind of did that a little bit with the computer cast, but I could be misremembering. Yeah, the first video on my YouTube from 2011 is just the Gino Vanelli song slowed down, not even looped or anything. Fire. So I was like, more like, you know, very DJ Screw influenced, you know. Okay, that was what I was about to ask. Because like, was, people are asking well, for that mixtape in chat. It's funny and funny because like, uh, I don't even have a copy of that anymore. Ah. Uh, yeah, ah. hard drive fried. I uh, lost pretty much everything oh, that I had in the beginning. That's... Unless I could ask the old oh, friend. You're, you're, not, you're not a real artist until you have Oh, yeah. Somebody's got it. Yeah. Somebody I mean, whenever that happens. I bet Scott and Michael has it. Whenever that happens, I always get influenced to make new shit. 
anyway so it's not a it's not necessarily a bad thing um but yeah like i was saying like uh, my friend my friend would go and like in high school he'd go and buy like when like uh uh triple like three six mafia was coming out, like drop a new oh album. like old memphis buy. rap shit yeah, but he'd go to the store so stoned that he would always accidentally buy the chopped and screwed version and be like, "What the fuck is this?" And then he'd he'd nice. like give me the CD. He'd be like, "Here you go." And I'm like, "Yeah, I like I like this." <laughs> I remember the first oh, time I ever so heard chopped and screwed funny. music. I was like a kid, and the, they pit, they would pitch the voices and slow them down so much that it was just muddy and like molassesy sounding. And I thought it sounded funny. Come to find out, like I would end up loving that shit. So the joke's on me. Yeah, so I mean, funny I want that you accidentally got those albums. That's great. Yeah, that's funny. Your buddy hated the chopped and screwed version, so he gave them to you. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, shout yeah. out that dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so funny. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think it's funny that your first every time you get experience with some kind of new medium, the first thing you do is like doing it in a way that other people wouldn't want to. Like guitar. Wow, well, what can I just play static for the first two years? That's a very like, oh, good point. Rap album. I'll take the chopped and screwed version. Like you you you're seem to specifically go towards the unorthodox way of dealing with the new medium every time you're given the new medium, it seems like, which is interesting, you know? Yeah, I'm completely self taught. Like I never I like learn shit later on, but like I never took lessons or anything. I know, absolutely. Um, no music theory. So, what did you? What um? What kind of um? What was? Did you use a digital audio workstation for your work? If so, which one? No, I always use tape for the longest times. I started That's out with what a I thought. A task okay. cam, like the the, the the Porta Studio, the MK3 one, the the big. I got one. one. I have one upstairs right now. I have the same um, one. Um, and then, that's what I suspected is that you were doing with those songs, but I wasn't sure because obviously. You know, people would use um, Audacity or Ableton, right, and uh, to make this stuff. I had a sense that you were doing it with analog material. Well, I was doing like a comedy. It's always different. Like I've done, I've done stuff before the, that I just I did like iMovie, like <laughs> like I'm nice. not, iMovie, <laughs> yeah, like what? the old like hardest fuck, like H the iMovie HD, like the one from like 2000. That was the best one. Whatever. Yeah, the one with like the the. <laughs> the, 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 whatever that thing's called. <laughs> I, yeah, I know, know. What you're talking about. The, yeah. the, the, it was the final. It was like uh, yeah, with the um the director's the thing. Okay. So yeah, that yeah, one was yeah. great too. I used to make a lot of my music videos, which back but using that one, and then they like they, they updated it and it took away all the cool features. Dude, it had like the best, like the fog in that, and then like the lightning mm. and stuff. It looks so good. I used to use that like if my early skeleton lipstick music videos they were like made with a lot of that and then eventually they just like they just took away all the cool features they're like this is too powerful equipment too powerful we're giving this away for free fuck that it's got rid of it and then it was like all final cut pro ah the adobe that. method i still have yeah. a, a copy of it on my mid 2007 um imac it still exactly. has that version on it yeah. Go. yeah wow yeah i missed that version they really like took away all the cool stuff and it, just, like, it went from being the little snappy thing to like the yeah. stupid fucking star. You know, once it turned yeah. to the star, it was like they took away all the cool shit. That's when I started using like uh, After Effects and Premiere and stuff. Uh, okay. Yeah. But uh, for the Vaporwave stuff, I've always used DJ for Apple. Really? Yeah, I love that shit. It's like a <laughs> VJ software? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. I've always, Hell yeah. I've, always, I've mostly used that. But sometimes I do bounce it to tape, but like, you know. You're the, yeah, this is definitely an unorthodox way of doing it, <laughs> which is very. I mean, very most cool. of my stuff I sample now is from like B movies, like Hard. bad movies, yep. you know? It's like people, movies so, that people think suck. I always find So, like, some what are some of your, what are your, some trend. movies that you really like that people think suck? Hmm. I don't know probably all the pm entertainment stuff like i know there's like a cult following of people like cyber tracker and stuff like that like people you show that to like a normal person they probably say it's terrible but i love i love that kind of stuff yeah bro we uh yeah we we got some fans of of so bad it's good movies in chat so that's yeah I that's had to ask. that that i knew there would be some people would ask. i mean that's my creme de la creme is it's so bad it's good what was that like, one movie uh, i think it was called snake eater it was this fucking dude on a motorcycle 
<laughs> like this. Oh my Sounds god, it was so bad. No, the Snake Eater was like the best movie I've ever seen. All Shout the, out Lux for making me watch it. I'd watch it again. All in a the year, all the um, like it all the nineties, dude. I would love to watch it again. Nineties television, all the nineties television. Like I sampled a lot of Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero, and nice. uh, Melrose Place, and shit like oh, that. Yeah. And then all the stuff they played on like USA Network was insane, like Pacific Blue and Silk and Stockings. Just, yes. F oh, we've Lefemme literally Nikita. been watching Silk Stockings. It's, it's so good. It has, he that dude's on Melrose Place too. Oh, he um, is. Rob Estes. Yeah, that's his yeah. name. Yeah, we've been, we've been going through night. that. Um, I love the yeah, sets in that show. You ever watch Renegade? No. <laughs> yeah, man, with Lorenzo. Renegade. Lamas. Someone was talking yeah. about it the other day, though. It's good. It's pretty good. Yeah, all that Damn. stuff's on so, Tubi. Yeah, shout out Tubi, yeah. dude. Oh, it's all on Tubi. You're it's, right. That's it's where it all so good. All there's oh. so much bad good on there. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to ask. You oh now, yeah. Who? When did you start connecting with other vape? Did you connect with other vape wave artists ever? Uh yeah. Um, and I don't really talk to anybody anymore. I had a falling out with a lot of people. Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, you 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 try to work on stuff with people and you have disagreements and you know you people get upset, you know, and you call them out on stuff and then they block you. <laughs> so like, yeah, damn, you know, people can't handle yeah. confrontation, I guess. Yeah, but like, I mean, if 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 someone's that quick to just drop you, then it's like you were never homies to begin with. You know yeah, what I mean? But next. there's yeah. there, there's uh there's kid there's this kid, Kurt Thomas Paul, I still uh talk to and he was the first person that ever reached out to me because we were doing similar things on YouTube at the time with before it was Vaporwave just making loops and stuff. Um I still talk to him, but he doesn't even make music anymore, which is sad because I have people sometimes ask me like where where did he go? Because it was so good. It's uh, real, it's real sad when passed? people are real good at what they do and they just stop. Yeah, do you you, I mean, you remember before it had a name too? Then you remember right? It, it didn't have it didn't have a name. That was like probably like a year after. I and was they, the, in, what's in it called? It. I, I just remember starting to read about that name and like the tags on like Last FM and then the article with the obviously the famous article. What the fuck, you know? What's the big article that they did? Remember? Lux. Lux will probably Bloody. jump in. It, was, it wasn't tiny mixtapes, was it? No, way before that. It was no. the, and the art music, the art magazine. Yeah. Did the thing Dummy mag. What the fuck, man? Dummy mag. Dummy mag? That's right. Dummy yeah, mag. what was the name of the writer? Yeah, dummy, the Dummy mag article. Thank you. I think like, he's was, actually he since apologized. Wasn't uh, it I written all wrong and stuff? Like it was. Yeah, it was like, like yeah. They talked to Internet uh, Club <laughs> a lot in that article, though, yeah. and I thought that they had a lot of good things to say. Um, listen, it was just interesting. It was the first time I had like really heard cool. about this I stuff like that game. guy. He's yeah, they're very cool. Yeah. Oh damn! Someone's at the door. Shit, man! I remember when there wasn't a name for vaporwave. I used to just call it lo-fi synthwave. Oh, it's just my. It's just I my. I just call it, I didn't know what to call it. I was just like, damn! Could, he got the DoorDash yeah. on deck. You know, all we had was that Echo Jams tape, so it just like Echo Jams. Yeah, it yeah, was just yeah, like um, true. It was, it was interesting you, when it got a name, and I was like, "Oh, this what did is, you get?" I just got some drinks. Oh, fire! A Red Bull at 9 p.m. Shout out. <laughs> I drink um, a lot of caffeine. And hey man, I smoke a lot of who were who were some artists to tell you. that have stopped lot, making music that you really long. miss and you wish that they would you wish that they hadn't stopped? Hmm. Let me think about this. Who stopped? Hmm. I don't know. Kurt Kurt Thomas Paul is definitely one. I wish he still made music. He was really good at it. Um, I I will say I wish that Night People was still a record label. Night People. Uh, yeah, I thought Night People was good, but this wasn't vaporwave stuff. This was like it had it's like all hot. It was like internet music stuff. Yeah, it was like sleepover and hot. stuff like that. Sleepover is that the you talk about the witch house artist? Kind of, it was kind of kind of witch housey. 
Yeah, she put up the there was a lot of kind of witch housey back then. Yeah, it was like sleep in an infinity X. symbol and then over, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. She put out the we album on uh, hippos, yeah. hippos, and hippos and tanks. Hippos and tanks, man. Hippos that's, and that's tanks a was, a great, record label. Yeah, that was, was a great record label. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's so sad what happened to him. All oh right, my Pete. god, yeah. That, I read an article about that. That's oh, terrible. Yeah, I, fuck, I, I don't remember what it was, but I remember hearing about it. He it's died sad. in a car. I, I live in Miami, so I think about it often. Uh, he died in a car accident here. You live in Miami? Yeah. You're in Miami now. That's hard as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I lived here for over four years. Nice. I'd like to visit at some point. Yeah, um... I should do like a cribs episode because so, my whole my whole apartment looks like a vaporwave mini man. Dude, I caught some of it and I was like, this guy's for real. Like he, one thing he pointed out last night, it, just off screen is a, a like a not a Trinitron, but like no, it is a Trinitron, but it's not like the Trinitron that everyone wants, the PVM. And uh, Brent spins his camera around. He's like, I got that CRT. And I was like, yeah, it's about three hundred goddamn pounds, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got that at a state sale. The guy, I was laughing because the guy plugged it in was like, "No signal!" Oh, good God, no! <laughs> he thought it was broken. I thought it was broken, like, <laughs> bro. I bought mine from a guy in Vegas for sixty dollars. <laughs> I have no idea how I scored that shit. <laughs> Heavens no! <laughs> no, no signal. It's broken. Just get it. Get it out out here. Here. <laughs> no signal. Bold it, Ash. <laughs> yeah. There's some great impressions you guys are doing right now. Uh, hey, 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 oh, I watch plenty of Wizard of Loneliness videos, believe me. Is that where you get it from? You learn from the best. You want to get another quick question in before we go to audience questions? Um, sure. Because we don't have like a uh, so like a mid portion a question. for this episode. Uh, yeah, so sure. So what do we? Okay, so do you think of? Re I mean, I know you put out some work recently. So uh, do you get plans to continue? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, got some. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm mostly doing the Bong City and the Daryl Strait stuff. Um, as for future Funk Crocker, I think I'm just gonna go by my name, Brent Grant, so I can just do a more like any genre of music I want to. So it'll probably be like no more way to go wave now. and whatever else, a blend, a little blend. That's good. I'm excited to yeah, hear it. Yeah. Um, I might do a Night Trips 3. Oh, oh, really? People are yeah. want, people want that. Well, that's because people, well, people want that, too, you know? Yeah, and I really need to do, like, uh, I'm gonna think, I've been thinking about it long. I really need to start just putting out my physical copies of stuff because people want physical copies of what I do. So I should just, uh, uh, like, do it on my own because I've had so much problem with labels in the past like never getting yeah. copies or paying me or what not um, paying you that's fucked i've never gotten paid by anyone except that i'm gonna get paid by retract which was awesome to work with oh, him i love i love yeah, i know Mexican that guy stargazer i love I've met him He's stargazers great. i think that's the best music that's out right now like it's it's t Shout especially out. if you like that hip damn stuff. he's really like, tight I with i click top two I love that shit, man. That guy is awesome. Shout out. Well, I hope somebody yeah. lets uh, lets Carter know that you complimented his work. Yeah, I met I him, him, and he's a real sweetheart. Yeah, he's rules. Big fan. You know what doesn't rule? Trader Joe's beer. Fuck Trader <laughs> Joe's beer. Not only are they union Good. busters, but it's gross. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, terrible. guys, we're going to open up the pit for... Uh, Guest submitted yeah, questions. Roche Corp asked a question, Eager Beaver, about 25 minutes ago, and I pinned it and it went away. But Roche Corp, um, who I forgot to mod, let me go fix that. Roche Corp wanted to know um, are there, you kind of just answered this, but like any up and coming artists that you are really into in the vaporwave scene, other than New Mexican Stargazers? Anybody else you can think of that's kind of newer that you're into? Um. <clears throat> You know, to be honest, I don't. I, get back very, I don't listen to much vaporwave anymore. You want to put us on Darcy anything? Like? I mean, I really like. Um, I really been liking that new Dean Blunt album that came out with John Robertson. Um, that shit's pretty sick. And then Bar Italia is really good. I like them too. Dean Blunt. I I need to get into more Dean Blunt. I I have I have languished and lagged and i i should fix that 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like he was a big part of, like, influence, you know? Early, yeah. Like, the early Hype Williams shit. And yeah, stuff, a lot of know? experimental. Oh, yeah. Williams. Hype Williams, that's, that was... It's all Vaporwave. Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> to me it was, because that was all, like, the stuff I was listening I mean, to when I was like, thinking about it. Like, 2007, 2008, 2009, all I was doing was going on Blogspot and just find rare funk and boogie soul tracks and like fuck that, yeah and, funk soul and that, like basically and then that just like geared me up for like to go into 2010 2011 and just start taking those rare tracks and looping them and stuff like hell yeah, yeah. Like, that's all... because back then you could get those links in a rapid share or mega upload and like media fire yeah shout out media fire like, you know it's it, it kills me every time I see a, a Mediafire link from back in the day. It still works. I'm like, damn, this yeah. Is oh hell yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Man, amazing! It was such a it was such a cool time. You would go on those blogs, and every like day they'd post some other like collection of some obscure like here's a collection of obscure '70s funk yeah. bands from Japan, and you could download like it would five be different a, albums. A zip it was or such like a grab bag, file. and you'd be like, oh my god, I can't believe yeah, I'm gonna get access. I first started doing cool that in like 2004, 2005 on like Live Journal. That's Shit. how. That's what. Nice. That's what got me into all the file sharing, like for music, because you could just Press go on this blogs, one buddy. thing and like and like request an album, and then and within the week someone would upload it. You know, right? And then Bro, do you remember what dot CD? No, I don't remember Damn, that. Damn, it was like a huge, huge, like, seeding and torrenting site that you had to get an invite to. I miss it every day. Oh, uh, man. You yeah, I always just use Blogspot. I actually spot. think that's where I found Chuck Person's Echo Jams is what dot CD. It was, it was it was such a more interesting way to discover, like, and it's a shame, too, because now, like, you do have these streaming services, and that stuff might be on the streaming service, but you'll never find it. You need, like, you need these people who ran blogs to curate and to show you things, you know what I mean? It was like having a friend. You could like find online yeah. and let you borrow all these albums, you know. Even even though YouTube has made a lot of changes over the years, it's not as cool as it used to be. It's still the sickest thing for me, I think, because it has all the rare stuff on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to know the to SoundCloud look for it. and when I went to those blogs, gotta, the blogs they, I mean, that, like the curator yeah. who ran that blog was like he, he someone who happened to yeah, know that's a what lot I used about. To do. Like, yeah, like shout like out to Mutant Sound Blogspot. That I used to found crazy stuff on that on that site. Oh, man. Shout out wow, curators like yeah. David Dean Burkhardt and Mr. Nonsense, Patrick. David Dean Burkhardt, yeah, man. Luigi Best music Donatello. Ever. Yep. Man. Um, you know, and it's just it felt like overnight. Like I went from being able to to discover all kinds of amazing music that I'd never thought to listen to, and then it was all shut down. Yeah. Oh, um, shout out to Cube Underlord. Uh, yeah, in Cube Underlord. For, they he they put uh, all my stuff on YouTube, which I think was really cool. Like stuff like a lot of people don't get to see and stuff like that, like the rare stuff. So shout out to them. We got a question in chat from Tryptophan. Uh, Tryptophan says, "Yo, I'm a big yeah yeah." Shout out to another OG. Shout out Tryptophan. I we love should this have Tryptophan dude. on here. This yeah, it's uh, cool. real shit. Fuck, where's the question? It's pinned, but I can't see oh. it. Uh, they said they're a big Solex Mal fan. What influenced that sound? And was Semya an influence? Um, the Solex Mal stuff was like post sperm whales, and uh, that's I like. I feel like all those recordings have like uh, I had this like ocean tape, but it's just waves. So I tried to like, Hard. you know, do it all based that sound of the waves crashing or whatever and uh that what i was trying to do was trying to have like a more mature uh more settle type of new age uh, ambient music with that so Did you yeah say like metal I, no um mellow mellow i heard metal yeah. my bad uh, gotcha i'm with you now um so yeah like that that, I just wanted to do some chill shit, and that's when I, that was like peak of me being all bad boy. So like, uh, boy, I was very sleepy on those recordings. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I see what you're yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got you. <laughs> I love that stuff. That's like, there's the one thing that I did with Turlu, the split, the 30 minute track that I did for the split with Turlu. That, that's one of my favorite things I've ever recorded before. 
It's just so on point. I remember where it. I was. Yeah. Okay, where if you're able to, you should link that shit in chat. Okay. Because I would definitely be keen to hear your favorite thing you've ever made. Yeah, yeah. Which is a question um, I often ask people, so. Yeah, I remember where I was, what what equipment I was using. I loved the uh, the yeah. I used to have a Yamaha MT8X, uh, eight track, multi recorder tape. I loved that thing. The thing was sick. Um, I did it with that. I did all those recordings with that. Uh, that's when I was still living at my dad's house when he was still alive or whatever. My dad was cool as shit, man. I miss him every day. Uh, Sounds like it, man. He, he would I just let me do. make. He would just ma let me make music all day long with my friends, awesome. loud as shit, and never, like, gave me any shit for it. He was the only person that, like, really, like, supported me in my life with, like, doing that night. That's why I miss him Damn. so much, because he, he was, like, he was my boy, you know? What a, that's a so important, dude. Yeah. Um, I think Lux and Tryptophan just both linked it. Uh, is it, how do you pronounce that? Berg, Bergenost.bandcamp.com. C sixty two, oh. two, yeah, I think they found it. Tryptophan wants to know how you hooked up with Turlu. Tumblr, Tumblr man. I was Rest one in of peace my, to another. Where, that, uh, that's how I know pretty much a lot of people, and there's not very many of them around still that I, I'm connected with. Um, but uh, he was one of the first people I, I, I think I started talking to on Tumblr. Back in the day, like 2010, 2009, 2010. I miss Tumblr all the time, dude. I mean, it's still it there, so but like, just, I don't know, just kind of came and went. Yeah, you had to, yeah, definitely had to be there for it, for sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, I connected with a lot of cool people through Tumblr, for sure. Hell Yeah. Um, how are how right now? How are you organizing your like your work and your life with regards to making art? Good mm. question. You know, to be quite honest, I haven't really been influenced to record anything in the last couple couple months. Um, yeah, I haven't been. I haven't wanted to do anything uh, <laughs> musically, which I feel like the more I wait to do stuff I, it builds you know what i mean like when i was younger i used to record like ev a song a day like every day i would always be doing something oh know? yeah now that i'm older i kind of like just let it just build up and then when i feel it then that's when i do it because i get like really obs obsessive like I, I will like work on shit the shit for like hours and hours and hours straight and then kind of like get so addicted to doing it like I don't want to stop until it's finished. So, like, I had to, like, kind of, like... Hey, a little obsession never hurt anybody. Yeah, but I had to, like... I used to prematurely put out stuff when I was younger, and then, like, two months would go by, and they're like, damn, I don't like this fucking part. So now that I, I'm older, I, I have the patience to sit on it and, like, test Good drive man. stuff and switch it up and edit things out. Like, I used to not do that. I used to be, like, so, like... Ah. Like, I can't, I have to sit here and do it until it's done. So yep. I'm glad that I'm not like that anymore. And I kind of like, I'm chilled out mellow. I don't put out music as much as I used to. But um, I feel like I'm going to start dropping some stuff. Because I, I have like three albums I want to work on. And right. have been working on. Hell yeah. What yeah. are some of the, like, we, what are the general like concepts that you're kind of sitting on right now? That you have like partitioned into three different things. Well, the Bong like City sounds. Bong City Vagabong is going to be what it's going to be called, and it's like just sleepy, um, bludgy, shoegazy kind of uh, post-punk sounding stuff. More on the lines of uh, my last album, Dreamer. It's going to sound more like that. Um, I got some new equipment, so I'm getting a more Wally -E, uh, sound, Wallace sound going on um new daryl is gonna be like spa themed spa <laughs> like the theme me yeah fun. like the like the ambient music they play at like the spa kind of like kind of like you a little gen generic sounding you know what i mean what are you might... gonna, what, are, what, are, what are, how are you gonna make that music oh uh, using uh, analog synthesizers 
Hey, what? Hard. Hold on. Hey, back up. What analog synthesizers? What synthesizers do we? How are we talking about right now? I got a op. I got a op six and a um a Juno DI. Shit. Okay. That's awesome, yeah. man. I've and then stuff. That's why I want to ask it. And then uh. Hell well, yeah. it's funny because when when Korg put out the Op Six, they like I bought it full price, and then like um, like two weeks later, they dropped the price like th over three hundred dollars. Damn, I was like, what the fuck? I, I, just, what the fuck? I was like, I just should have gotten price well, protection on that. that. So they gave me the the whole VST suite for free. Oh, nice. Okay. Really? Um, they kind of yeah, they not terrible. Themselves. No, I'm happy with it. I saw that. Yeah. I remember when they first dropped it, and then I thought I was seeing something. When I looked at it, literally, I think I looked at it again like three months later. It wasn't that much long later when I looked at it again. I saw that the price seemed significantly lower than what I had seen, what I saw it initially advertised for. Yeah. So, luckily, I have nothing bad to say about them. I'm very happy they did that for me. <laughs> and I'm glad, I call, I'm glad my friend was like, yo, I'm getting one. And I was like, what the hell? I'm glad he... Told me about that. Put it <laughs> to your attention. Thank God. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. Right. Kick, kick back. Glad they made it right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to be using. You're going to be working with synthesizers for that one. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so the first the one's going to be mostly. All the Daryl stuffs on cassette. Um. Sick. And then the other one, all the Bonk City stuffs, like. I just do an Ableton. But I use like actual hardware. So you record hardware onto Ableton. Oh shit. Something tells me we're about to get a show and tell. Like this. Uh, what do we got the, there? A Yamaha. This, this is the pedal. Oh. This is the mat. This is the Supreme uh, shoegaze pedal right here. Oh, so what What are we looking at for people that are listening to podcast services? This is a Yamaha M FX500. This thing's sick. You've got this like Effects crazy pedal. Sound. It's so good. It's hard. Like, yes. I think Slow Dive used this shit. Ooh, Shit. got my oh. attention. Yeah. There you go. So let me ask you, when you you said that, so the other album, the Spothing one, you'll be recording the synthesizers, you record them into Ableton then? No, that, the Daryl I do on the, the Yamaha. On the multi-track. The multi-track. Spa themed album you're recording onto the multi-track? On the tape. I oh shit! All the Daryl well, stuff I do on, on tape. Oh, you do that all on tape? And yeah, then all you the put Palm it in... City. Yeah, and then I transfer it. Well, that's I dope. Use, Damn, that is one. dope. Yeah, yeah. I like no, the Yamaha who, uh... stuff because it has a tape out for every individual track, so you don't have to bleed it all together. Ooh, that's really cool. Yeah. But you know who so, does tell uh, us, works a tell lot us... with four tracks? Is uh, is is what's his name? Is um buddy uh 18 carat affair who, who uh well mostly records just onto the four tracks remember he said that he has a collection of them and he like likes some more than others occasionally and like almost all of his albums like he has too many and that's how he records most of his yeah. albums which he had a good I think I heard tracking. He's like hasn't he like recorded audio onto like a betamax player or something like that like there's when, there's somebody that does that i can't remember who, if it's him or golden it, probably him or I wouldn't be surprised him. if him he he Dennis is is that is that guy he's that guy he that's always doing it that way it, it, um, we, it, that is a good way too. to record that is a very good way to record to use a VCR for just audio he's, it's a, good, pretty, he's a good friend sick. of the show he's been, that's he's unreal. been on before as well tell us about your third project because we are getting backlogged on questions um sorry yeah I'm gonna start a <laughs> no, new thing called multimedia cruising which is like a blend of like a bunch of different, it's going to be like sampled and be playing stuff. Like, so it's going to be like Ooh. a combination. Uh, I but like I also, that. I definitely I need to that. put out a, I definitely need to put out a, a slow weather jams tape because people have been asking That's me to do that. That's the next thing I was going to ask you. Yep. People have been like asking me to do that, that for like over 10 years now. Throw that shit in the <laughs> self promo <laughs> channel. Just consider, Discord it's, server. Consider it yeah, I really legacy. need to do it. I need to really need to consider do it. Consider a legacy sequel. Yeah. Gotta, I gotta do something. I feel so bad. Just, if people want it, man. Just, yeah, just give the people what they done. want. I know, Start I've a Patreon, so, and they'll I've pay been, you to do yeah. it. <laughs> so we got a handful of people in chat that would like you to pan your camera over and show them the lizard. Show oh, them the lizard? Not joking. So many people want to see that lizard, bro. Thank you. 
Oh, it looks good. I heard a loud very gasp powerful. from the other room. Very cool. Very, very, very Florida. Oh, yeah. That was honestly what I thought. As soon as you said he was in Miami, I was like, oh, yeah, where, where the chameleons fall from oh, the that's trees why when, it's, a, uh, when yeah, it gets cold. Let me, show you, let me show you guys. Yeah, show us around. You are far away from your mic, but we can kind of narrate what we got going on here. Yeah, but we just we, we want to take the tour right now. We get it. We'll yeah. Be careful, don't go. don't trip over anything. Whoa, that's fucking cool. I wish short stuff was here. Look at that mirror. Oh, oh yeah, dude, the whole This is one of those motherfuckers that's like about it. Oh. Yeah, man. I just have posters. Been about it. <laughs> oh man, I wish it wasn't grainy looking right now. Look at that. I can see. Oh, that's beautiful. Whoa. Oh, you're right. Like, Your place is very uh it's exactly as you described Whoa. It earlier, the vapor wavy stuff. Right. We've got you cropped look at, look at quite a bit. Oh damn, he's like, are you on a phone? Holy shit, he's going yeah. all over the place. No, he's got his guy, he's got his computer. Oh, he's on his computer? Oh, wow. Look at that, uh, that right there. I wish it was oh, wow. more high res, but he's got like a curio with all kinds of like. You ever seen what a watch? Oh, whoa, it's a watch mirror. It's a watch mirror <laughs> clock. That's, That's oh my fucking God. Yeah, cool. Like Where do you get this like, stuff? Well, you're, you're away cool. from your mic, That's but dope. probably like. Um, can you hear me? Yes. That was sick, yeah. dude. That's got dope. Got, that I is got the really mic cool. right here. You gotta, you gotta take some picture of this stuff and upload it in the server. There's some people that would yeah. love it. I'd love to see yeah. some high-res photos of this place. Great. Yeah. Whoa, wow, that's, that's cool. cool. What a, what a, what a, we did, we a real crisp mission today. Yeah. yeah we're vaped out. Yeah, this I mean, is I live in the vi vi live Oh, in the yep. Vapor. Short stuff is in chat. She's seeing that shit. Did you see the watch mirrors? She says she has <laughs> the she has the one mirror. Um, oh, the watch mirror, really? He, well, no, not that. Well, I don't know. Well, well she'll clarify, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Maybe that one. Tryptophan asked about you being a famous, famous in Hollywood. What? Famous in Hollywood. Oh, I'm maybe feeling the he movie. was joking around, but uh, are you in a movie? Maybe the movie. There's what? a there's a movie that's coming out that I'm gonna be in called Busted Babies. It's like oh uh, yeah, the one with Casper. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Casper. Yeah, that's my first. My we have first a we have an IRL connection, gig. Skelly. One of uh, okay. one of our friends is uh, is also friends with Brent and is in a movie. Busted Babies. I hope they do it. Busted babies. I hope they do a showing down here. Um. Oh, Lux, is, Lux has already got the link. <laughs> yeah. Oh, holy shit! Unreal. Lu Thank you, Lux. Oh, somebody else. Okay, hey, Lux. Save it on Flex. <clears throat> Lux mentioned um, that you talked about PM Entertainment, but she wants to know what's a movie in that realm that you love so much that you want more folks to know about it. Hologram We're go back man. to that. Hologram man. Hologram man. <laughs> Hologram man, hundred percent. Very cool. Yeah. We um, <laughs> Lux has made me watch Trancers about five times. Oh, Trancers! Uh, we finally the found a. So good. We oh, finally man. found a VHS oh. copy of Trancers at a local um, like consignment shop. You know, everyone sweats the first Lawnmower Man, but I really like the second one, Job's War. Joke oh yeah, war. that's right. When they replaced him with uh, Matthew Brewer, played him in that one. That was a random choice, like fucking Max Headroom himself. Um, oh uh, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm a little bit familiar as well. I would, I was always a big fan of Alien Intruder, which I believe is there's seven transfers. Holy shit. Yeah, I didn't realize that there was that many. Jesus God. Whoops. I've only seen the first one, and I. I've oh, that's seen enough it more, for more me. Than once. You gotta watch um, Snake Eater. Lux yeah, I've never Telegram seen that. Man, shout out! Yeah, Snake Eater's amazing. Yeah, I like all the all the eighties and nineties cybernetic cyberpunk movies. Oh, dude, movies. me too. Yeah, that's my yeah, favorite that's genre good. genre for sure. It's a great great genre of like it's like movies written by, about computers by people who don't really know that much about computers, and that kind of right. makes it more imaginative. But that's what makes them more imaginative, and I like the fact that they don't know that much about. Them. If they knew more about computers, it would be boring. It would be stupid, and it would there'd be <clears throat> so many limitations. But when you write these people who are writing about like cybernetic this and that, and they don't understand how limited that the technology was at the time, it makes it more interesting. You know what I mean? It actually becomes more boring when people have more technical knowledge of the of that world. You know what I mean? So I always preferred like you know what, you know transfers or scanners or uh, scanners, um, uh, you know hackers. Scanners or is the other phenomenal. Or like Gators is phenomenal. It's just not a cybernetic movie. I meant to say uh, hackers. 
um, yeah, things like transfers or these or these movies that are like written by people who don't know much about how computers work, but that makes them have a little bit more reverence for the concept of what they could potentially do, and it becomes more creative and a little bit more magic. So it's fun about those movies. But, Future Funk Rocker, what is a piece of art that you think exists only for commercial or non-artistic purposes? <laughs> the McDonald's Golden Arches. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good goddamn answer. <laughs> what is a common misconception about your work? Mm. I don't know. I don't even think people even know it's my work. I think I've used too many names. I've, I've confused everybody. <laughs> Do you regret that? Do you regret not kind of using a, a unifying... I know you don't really use the name Future Funk Rocker much anymore outside of like the track you put on or that, that was on... Um, uh, what is it? Spirit of... Music of the Now Age 4. Music of the um, Now Age. Yeah, I'm like fucking blanking on the name of the comp. Um... But uh, but thank you for letting us use that name because I feel like it's it's the most kind of like unifying. Record I mean that's I feel like in, in in the vaporwave scene like that's how people would would know me. But like I don't think people know that Brent Grant is future funk rocker. Um, that is true. Or that like slow weather jam stuff was future funk rocker. You know, I think that's that that could be the misconception there. We got a first timer, first time chatter named Serge. That's quite the fan, or Sergey. Don't want to mispronounce. I think that's Serge my or boy Sergey. Sergi. I think that Sergi. might be my None boy of the above. Sergi. Sergi. Boss is named oh. both ways. I'm sorry, Sergey. Eh? <clears throat> what is something that artists do that gets under your skin? Promotion. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's actually something that we talk about regularly. How do we know when? There's how do we know when there's too much self promo? What is the best um, way to, to, I to think, promote? Yeah. I think he, like dude, I think the only thing corny about from promo is like doing that shit where you like stand with your band members <laughs> like in like ah. by a tree. Like that that's a like the, Oh, you I, mean like, like a photo shoot? Yeah. Like you like could have yourself photoshopped into a like tree can, like Creed. Like I mean that that album cover is pretty tight actually. <laughs> But like the black and white pictures of the dudes, like all angry looking. Yeah, like just it's very like, serious. I want a ghost bath <laughs> photo so in chat right now. Fucking Dennis, never smiling. I oh, we were totally for Dennis. That's exactly what I was thinking of when you said that. I'm like, I'm just I remember at Econ dude, I was like, damn, who's this oh, angry looking just motherfucker? My band. Yeah, come listen to my band. Don't be mad. You know it's true. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis also like one of the, also like one of the silliest people. Well, oh, the dude! People in you remember that night at Midwest that season of the glitch? Holy shit! Like <laughs> I still have taping. video. Who is he taping to the? Who is taping? He was. He was. He was standing. Oh yeah, and then he was. He was like behind the stage, pulling the curtains back. I think it was during Frank. I can't remember. He was like throwing like balls and like bouncy balls out under the stage, was fucking around with John. Yeah, maybe he'll say. Oh, he chat. was like. Was a. Uh... He was like, he had Incopath sitting in the chair and just like, like, all right, it's time. And then he just took duct tape and put, started oh duct taping God. into the chair, like running around him in circles yeah. with it. Don't give, don't give G.O.L. a couple of drinks. He'll go nuts. So Start we went backstage. We went to like, then we started, but then he like let us all, he led me and, and you and Frank all to the back area of that venue, which led to another room, which led to another room in the pitch black, which was a sex dungeon, apparently. <laughs> like, yeah. Accidentally covered the sex dungeon. I remember that, when uh, when Winter Mute realized we had gone back. He's like, "What? You not? What are you guys doing?" <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh my, we're gonna get in so much trouble." Shout out! Like, I'm so loved, glad that didn't blackball us. That was sex dungeon. Future Funk Rocker, how do you feel about separating art from the artist? Um. I mean, it's kind of hard to listen to somebody who's a complete dickhead, um, but... Hot take, yeah. I guess if it's the music's good and, and... Yeah, but, like, I don't know, man. Like, I had... I don't even want to bring shit up, but, like... I don't know, it's kind of hard to fuck with people after having, like... 
I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to do that. You know what I mean? I f- for me personally. Oh, uh, people want to see the acid titties pillow. <laughs> nice. Um, Skelly has an my acid entire, my, my entire house is just full of, like, good people. I remember, like, you had a coffee mug that was just, like, an ass, and I was like, yeah, that's Skelly. <laughs> it's, or, it's a torso. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, mean, man, I feel that. It's box. like, I think Fire Tools posted a tweet recently that was asking about who are some problematic musicians. I don't remember if she was asking if you're, like, still a fan of them, but, like, who are some problematic musicians? And, of course, I immediately knew who I was going to talk about, but just, like, you know, fuck it. You talk about- you- I talked about Sewer Slut. Oh, you can't, yeah. You, you, what, what is it you always say? You can't unlisten to... Morrissey, you, can't you know, be un, you can't be unmoved by what moved you. You just can't like not, not really like the Smiths, track. you know. I'm sorry, yeah, I mean, I that's, heard this thing, that's why I always bring up the Smiths, or I could bring up Ariel Pink as well. I guess. Yeah. Just like I don't know, I heard this stuff. It moved me. It touched me in a certain way. I don't know. Who, I don't know much about the vessel that created it, but the work moved me. And I can't just go and be unmoved. You know what I mean? That's not how emotions work. Yeah. And I don't know, man. I don't really whatever. But you're right. If don't they're a dick, support, it certainly don't makes support it hard. Them. Don't have to give them your like, money. It's a couple people on Dream Catalog that have been incredibly ugly to trans people. Just like unnecessarily uh, 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 hateful. I'm like, okay, you can, like, dudes you can have a have reputation like, for like, being like, 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 I don't want to, that's kind of like. Those are the dudes yeah. that yeah. have like we'll reputation for tags, being edgy. Like yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, they're like. They're just like edgelord. Dudes. I can handle edgy. I can't handle hateful. You know what I mean? They're like I, yeah, hateful that's edgy. Very, it's no, like the that's kind of people that too. fucking like swat you when yeah, you're streaming. Like hateful, yeah. this shit's terrible. Like no one needs yeah. to be doing that kind of shit to anybody. You know what I mean? I think like, that you drew a very, inter- very interesting distinction between edgy and hateful. And like yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a real distinction. I don't want to um, skip over Lux's question. She's got some some real bangers. She says, briefly going back to Weather Channel related discussion, who is Brent's favorite artist who was played on Local on the Eights? Or if you want, you could name a favorite track instead of artist. Oh man, what is that? What is it? It's the it's like I can't remember his name. I'm I'm, I'm embarrassed. Uh, the dude I I sampled for Slow Weather Jams. That's like the best. That's the best song. It's Phil Klein. Phil Klein. Phil that's his Klein. Name. Phil Klein. And what is the song? It's like the sweetest thing or something like that. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. But yeah, that that Phil Klein. He's got Hell a. Yeah. He's got this. His album, dude. His album cover is him just standing next to a fucking red Miata, like on a mountain. Ooh, hard, so, it's so, dude. It's so. It's so good. Um. Phil Klein. Hey, 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 look, Phil Klein. Yo. There he is. Honestly, dude, any dude that's standing in front of a car on the album cover, it's going to be hard. Like, there's an Alexander O'Neill album that's like him standing in front of a like diner, a car in a diner, and that album goes. Oh, dude, Alexander, Alexander O'Neill is the man. Top tier. He's possibly my favorite 80s R&B artist. Yeah, is, I love um, that. It, that was a big uh, influence to early Vaporwave for sure. Absolutely. Him, the Cool Notes, Ripping Tins. Who else has been sampled a lot? Um, eight, uh, who's the Toshiki Katamatsu all day long? SOS Band was a big one. Oh, yeah. SOS Band is very, very heavily sampled for sure. Um, I was always the, um, the album that's from the... The My Emotion, the Roger Troutman song. Oh, yeah, Roger um, Troutman. Yeah. I need to listen to more Roger Troutman. I love that one song, Emotions, but I haven't heard a whole lot of other. Listen Roger to Troutman. the rest of that uh, that album. It's really good. What is that? That looks cool. Matchbox. Oh, a skeleton matchbox. Holy shit. Everything Man, is I, either everything is either naked women or skeletons. It's kind we of need my, to like, we need to have like a not a filler episode. That's not really a nice way to say, it, but we like we need to have an episode so that I can get to t- affiliate where we just like show off your house. There's nothing really to see at mine. Just a bunch of cool posters. And so many fun stuff. profilos. Whoa. Another. What <laughs> is it? A pillow that like Profil. the, the yeah, skull moves. Oh, so people that are tuning into to like podcasting services, Skelly has a skull. He has a skull pillow, and the jaw moves. That's badass. The fucking jaw moves. <laughs> and a bunch of like fruit profilos too, because I just yeah. find them whimsical. 
I find them whimsical. Future funk yeah, Phil, rocker. Phil Klein, the sweetest part. That's what it is. The sweetest, sweetest part. part. The sweetest Link thing that is shit. Yeah. The sweetest part. Somebody will. Hell yeah. yeah. That, that's the slow weather jam. Our Lux has uh, heard it. Sample. Uh, that I still get commented, what is this song? And then you go scroll down right. and everyone tells you what the sample is. Dude, I know sample um, sample snitching is not cool, but there are so many times I'm like, all right, who's sampled? What is it? Or like, just go to the fucking YouTube video and hope that they catch it because I want to know what that shit is. I like when you hear something and you're like, you know what it is. You're like, I know what this, I know what this is. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. You're like, yeah, that's yeah. cool. I love that because yeah. it's like, that's what I like about Vaporwave is that you could take like your favorite part of a song and just loop it over and over again. You get those like chills. You know what I mean? Because it's very, I mean, that's, the, well, that's the concept very of Echo euphoric, Jams, baby. You've euphoric music you know what i mean like when i was tripping balls on acid the only thing that could calm me down was nobody here and i would listen to it for fucking two hours <laughs> straight to like not freak out yep <laughs> that's did what you that like the, um, did you like the the little vectroid ep that kind of riffed on nobody here and um what is it uh, inter uh end of life entertainment scenario number two i think it was called oh telnet erotica I don't think I ever heard like she did. That one. Oh yeah, yeah, she yeah, did. She did a. Do you remember that, Skelly? She did a um, her own flip of um, that Chris Deberg song, "Lady in Red," and then she did a flip of um, Roger Troutman's "Emotions." It was pretty good. It was really good, actually, in my opinion. It's called "Telnet Erotica." I, you, know, you know, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of how memory works, though. Is that when you think of your favorite song, mostly thinking of your favorite part of the song. And you don't True. remember quite all of the rest of it. So I always thought Favorite Wave was an interesting study of memory and the idea of like, okay, when I have nostalgia for a favorite song, it's mostly the part that I remember the best. And also it's kind of degraded in the same way that memory degrades. So it's slowed down, it's kind of crunchy, it's reverberated, and that's just kind of memory. You know, that's how it works, right? That's hard as fuck. Thank you. True. <laughs> so I always ask people, with regards to the music that you like, I'm going to ask you if you prefer slow or fast music, but I kind of think I already know the answer. Jay said so, the slow. But I also want to know, do you prefer music loud or quiet? Do you prefer music maximal or minimal? I like minimal, loud, slow music. <laughs> hey, you so all you're, the, you're probably all a fan of like ambient and like drone music and shit? Absolutely. That was my roots into music. Hell yeah. If it wasn't for that, I never would have even like... There's something oh, really? to be said about getting like ripped and turning a Tim Hecker album on loud as fuck. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> La I saw Laraji. He came and played the Miami Beach band show. I, I saw Laraji. It was so beautiful. I cried. <laughs> like amazing. It was, uh, it's Important. Awesome. Awesome. Those moments are are becoming more and more rare for me, but they're so important when they do happen. I saw a slow dive up in Asheville. I met my cousin. I met my Asheville. cousin up there. Yeah, and, uh, and it was great. I, I always wanted to see them, and uh, saw them. It was awesome. A couple, like a month ago. Did you add the bracelet, or did it come that way? With the bracelet. It came with the bracelet. That's part I of your cat. Hey, I added the cat to the bracelet. Though. Do you vacuum that couch? Yes. Good man. Um, future funk rocker, how do you feel about covers and remixes? Oh, I like them. I love yeah. them. Yeah, my friend just did a sick ass fucking Stone Temple Pilots cover that <laughs> it sent me the other day. It was a badass. I also love remixes. I what's think the, what's, that, the, what's Stone Temple Pilots song was it a cover? Oh, I can't remember. I'm so fried. Um, he did two. The Garden. Um, it was earlier stuff. Um, but you something from Core then, right? So, um, Wicked Garden, sex type thing, plush. I think he did sex type thing. It was man, sick. Man, man, to man, Christ man. Dice. His man. music's really good. His music man, he's man. a sick guitar player. Speaking of guitar, uh, we have a long-running tradition of asking, do you prefer Slow Dive or My Bloody Valentine? 
Mm, I like my bloody Valentine. Isn't anything? Oh, I didn't see that coming with all the slow dive references. I know. I love, but I, no, we haven't talked about MBV yet. Yeah, know? true. Uh... <laughs> I mean, like, that was one of the first bands that I, I I'd listened to them before I listened to slow dive. So there's like nostalgia shit going on there for me. Um, yeah. Mojave <laughs> Three. Who were the ex members of again? Oh, they were Ride. That's Ride, right, isn't it? Yeah. You're right. Roche Corp said Mojave 3, actually. Okay, so let me ask you this. For the long, like, out of, like, your whole right. life, what is an act or what act or artist have you loved for the longest? Like, what's one that's, like, stayed with you damn near yeah. your whole life? Rick Ocasek. The cars. The cars. Sick. You keep you keep referencing a strip silence question. I'm going up through the chat and I'm not finding it. So yeah, if you want to ask that let's No, I know wait, who is the look it up. You gotta love the cars. I mean they're Dude, Rick's solo stuff is so good. He wrote all that music. Okay, that's oh, what it was. Hold on, I'm going to interrupt because I know Mojave 3 was ex-members of Slow Dive, but it was another band that it was ex-members of. It's Chapter House, I think. Chapter House was involved Mojave, in Mojave right. 3? So I know, so that's why I was asking. Well, I know we're talking about Mojave 3 because it's ex-members of Slow Rachel, Dive. There was another Rachel, band that there was ex-members of in that band, and I, I couldn't remember. It's well, not Rachel, Ride. Rachel's the, on the one Chapter House album singing on it. Okay. Unreal. I like Mojave 3. They're like coffee house. Oh, rock. Soft Replica yeah. said Mojave <laughs> 3 is comprised mainly of slow dive. I thought it was Ride. But I, no, I know, but I, I said, yeah. You just let me be wrong. Band. Thanks. Oh, I didn't. There's there's another band that they were ex-members of, too, and I couldn't remember who. I, I, I'm looking it up online right now. So it's yeah, we're, we're good. We're good. So I trust Soft are. Replica. He knows, he knows his. That was the, well, yeah. So that was, I was wondering who the other un Was it Chapter House? That, 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 well, that's what it says online now that I'm looking it up. Who who did never Swerve Driver? Was it possibly Swerve Driver? It's Chapter House. I just it's looked it up Okay, online. you already answered the question. Yeah, okay, my bad. Swerve Driver is cool, Whoops. too. Whoops. Like Swerve it. Driver is cool. I think they called it... What did they call it? Blur with Chainsaws? With chainsaws. I can't remember what they called it. That Some some writer somewhere said some shit. Um, Luxury Elite is asking a question that Strip Silence regularly asks. Um... Rank these three things in order of importance. Album cover, track titles, album title. Gotta have a good album cover. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, album, I feel like album name and mm -hmm. album name and the art really helps with the track. Titles and I feel like track titles is always number three. three. Yeah, because it's like without the first two, you don't have, you won't even have the concept of of what you're trying to convey. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, a very I, visual. I, I agree, man. So, well, I mean, yeah. dude, we all came up around the same time. An album cover oftentimes would be the only thing you knew about something in a record store, and if it didn't grab you, like. You wouldn't go to the little listening station to see, you know, yeah, yeah, like, load uh, up the little thirty-second like low bit rate quick time files to see oh, if man, you wanted to buy it orders. or not. Good old fucking Borders, yeah, Stings. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like I just I completely forgot about going to Borders books and music and doing the Bruce little, books. yeah, yeah. And, and doing the little station pre-listen mm -hmm. thing. I bought so many albums off those listening stations. That's how I figured out about like Animal Collective. And all kinds of stuff. So it's little listening stations, man. Yeah, I mean, there were so many times where I bought stuff when, like, when I was back to when I was into buying records, and I wouldn't li like they wouldn't have a listening station. You just buy something because it had a cool oh, cover. Wow. Just... Yeah, because it had yeah, a cool you, cover. You know what? I <laughs> was on a record, record, record label I... you trusted. Yeah. Exactly. That's what. Like, if it was on say. Mexican was Summer or like Saddle label, Creek, I, I trusted. Yeah. Some some record label. That was what you did. You just had to. Okay, I trust. You trusted label. the labels. It goes on Constellation Records, Alien Aid. I knew it would be good. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Are there any cool stories you can share with us that happened while you were touring or like at a live show that you played? 
Um, I'm just, man, <laughs> sleeping in the van fucking sucked. Uh, oh, yeah. It, it, it was kind of funny because like, uh, it's like, it's like the one, the one kid, like during the show, the one of the kids took the van and, and like had no gas and he almost like ran out of gas and like got lost the and all, all this shit. Gas. Just like, God. just touring with like degenerates, like eating your food and shit like that. People um, you can't like rely on. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, like smoking weed and then in like the most public areas and then people being like you have weed and you're like no i'm not smoking like because you don't want the, the people on tour with you to smoke all your weed oh my god <laughs> oh you need to conserve your drugs yeah um i don't know but i missed that shit it's all funny like the one one kid got taco neck really bad sleeping in the van what the and, fuck is taco and, neck bro you know, your neck, neck. When your neck when your neck's stuck like that there, what when your neck gets, did he have yeah, to play a show like that yeah, it's it's so funny. Um, yeah, there's a like '90s Taco Bell commercial where they you, oh, Lux said yeah, there were some Shack ads like the, about it. Taco neck, Taco neck, because he had to bite the Taco, taco like, neck. Like okay, this. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But his neck got stuck like that. Um, and that shit was so fucking funny to look back on. Um, Unreal. Yeah. She linked the Taco neck ad on YouTube. What? That's hilarious. Oh, I haven't. Seen, Dude, I haven't seen that in like 20 years. <laughs> remember so it, Because all I remember, Bro, the only reason I said that, I said that because my that I always remember him just waking up and be like, I got a taco neck. He's like, what are you talking? Bro, Nyoka Shoje yeah, just sure. said some shit in chat that just unlocked a memory. Do you guys remember in the like 2000s at Walmart, they would have that listening station that had like 20 buttons you could push and it was all like new age music? And you could buy the fucking New Age CD and, like, I don't know anyone who ever bought it, that shit, but, like, you could push no, the button no, and it would be playing over in, like, the shoe section or whatever. I love that oh, Walmart sells, about that. sells vinyl. That shit cracks me up. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> unreal. I mean, it's only going to be Taylor Swift and Adele vinyl, dude. It's and like Beyonce. Jason, Al Jason Aldean limited edition vinyl. They Jason want, like, Aldean has a vinyl. Oh, they said they have the same limited edition of Walmart only. $50 Walmart vinyl. $50. <laughs> yep, three vinyl. Dude, I have a picture Walmart. of it. It's so funny. It Unreal. $50 Walmart vinyl. This is yeah. yeah. Sure I've ever heard. Walmart the vinyl. Resurgent. Yeah. Imagine doing a tie-in with Walmart for your vinyl. So, man, <laughs> that's the lowest echelon of cool. <laughs> Tryptophan has another banger. Can you talk a bit about your visual art? Tryptophan says he remembered you were posting quite a bit a couple months back, and they ruled, he said. Oh, yeah, that's like my... Chris Gaines listening station? Soft replica. Chris Gaines Absolutely. Station. That needs to be re replicated. I need to... I need that to, needs, that to, be needs all, to be all... Chris Gaines final win. Yeah. You know, I feel like the visual stuff is my life's blood. Uh, uh, damn. Always... Should have uh, talked about that an hour ago. You know, uh... You know, I I was the kind of kid in high school I was too shy to give a presentation, so I would fail it. And then they started letting me use like PowerPoint <laughs> to do, and then I was acing that shit because I'm like, nice. you know, I could, I, it, I the machine gave me confidence. You know yeah, I mean? right. I, I was good at like doing visual art stuff. Like it came very natural to me. So I feel like everything that I do now that I post on YouTube is all like a homage to like. Power, the stuff I made on PowerPoint because that's why it's kind of like minimal and kind of basic, you know what I mean? Honestly, bro, uh, PowerPoint visuals for a live stream would bang. Yeah, I love like I love early slideshow. internet. Early internet. Like if everything looked like, like word art and shit. Look like how AOL 1.0 looked like when you'd go in and be like buying flowers off of it off of a freaking bar that you had to click that was this big like when it had all the topics and stuff like that's my favorite era of internet you know what i mean was like all the early shit so i feel like that still holds a special place in my heart you know what i mean i guess people call it abandonware and stuff yep. like that like um yeah like sony vio pc that was a that was a it was a fucking stereo computer. Like, that shit was sick. Like, early 2000s, you know what I mean? Like, I love all that stuff. Like, you know? Are you talking about the, nice... the monitor that had the, like, the speakers stuck on the side of it? 
dude, it was and out yeah. of control. Like the on like the the PC tower, it had like freaking like a d- knob, volume knob what and the shit. F- Bro, do you remember when we had an entire yeah. elaborate desk just for the computer and the tower yeah, and the, the big, monitor and the, the speakers and the printer the and game slots? Yeah, and, and all the like right? yeah the CD slots and the the keyboard that would like pull out. Yeah, we just sound like a bunch of old guys now. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's pretty uh, cause I still feel like I'm 17 mm-hmm. years old. You know, I'm still a kid. I think that's the problem with uh, our generation, as uh, we didn't grow up. <laughs> well, you've definitely aged more gracefully than <laughs> yeah. I have. And uh, yeah, fucking like, it'd be cool if we could buy a car for 20, brand new car for 2,500 dollars, like our parents. Yeah, no yeah, shit. Like, that fucking I'm like, I'm wondering if I'll ever buy a house. I don't. Yeah, I don't I really know. Want, I don't know if I'll ever buy a Chris Gaines listening station. <laughs> I really want one, dude. Yeah. I, you know. Oh, I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna make these now. Uh, and just like send them like like little arcade <laughs> boxes with like Chris Gaines cut out on the side of them. I was just posting in chat that I'm gonna install them like randomly in like CVS's next. Oh, to, dude, like, it'll be like a whole open. like art movement or like an art project. You're like yeah, I mean, <laughs> installing these like next, gorilla like, listening like, stations. Things. You know, like and it has like a camera like, and it records the people that interact with it. I'm gonna just put them next to like next to like coin stars and those key copying machines because yeah. it's just it's nice to have Chris Gaines around. Like it's like I, I it's an emergency. I gotta go listen to some Chris Gaines. Put it in the fucking and you like have a station there to do loan stuff. station. So I'm gonna start you... like I want to construct like a wooden box and just have like the CD in there and the headphones set up and you just like take the headphones, hit like a red arcade looking button and it places the album for you. Just have Chris Gaines painted on the side. You know? Have you guys ever heard? You guys ever listen to Damien Dame? No, I don't know who Damien Dame is, man. Unfortunately, the R&B group. Well, Damien from Damien Dame put out a uh, solo album called 1996. And, that's great. Uh, Hard title. That's one of my biggest influences uh, for Vaporwave. Was that was sampling that album because it's so rare. And not that many people know Coins, about it yeah, and it has crazy song titles like freaking you and uh, cool shit you. there's literally a, a track you. called cool Sound. shit cool, cool shit. shit yeah cool shit sounds like something in <laughs> rail would listen to um and you go on discogs and listen wait to a it. second it's, it's i like, kind oh, of bro. That fool looks like, like he is going to sex you right up oh oh I know, <laughs> my favorite part I is like the lip ring right down the middle yeah yeah, and the bumped, bumped, I, turn I, I, bumped I, edges. I know who Damien Dame is because I remember watching specials about them because yeah, like, they had sex like this, appeal. they had this big career and then like they were gonna have their release of their album and then something got botched with that, but then they like kinda like reunited together and didn't the guy die right before he was he supposed died. to release that album? Like he, she, he's gonna make his like she, big comeback. She died She died, yeah. A year before him and then he died exactly the same day a year later. The same what he in died the, the world, same day. Dude. Yeah, I, I, I remember days, these right. people being a big. I watched a special on them, on, on, I remember it being like a big deal about them going to make this big comeback, and then they just kind of fell apart because of that. Yeah. No, I, I'm more insane. familiar with the story than I am with the actual music. Music is good. I, I, I it's watch, good. I'm, good. Fam- I'm, I'm, yeah, that's some I'm lore for sure. Familiar with this. Yeah. Definitely a hu- huge. Uh, oh, I, oh, and look at this early vaporwave sampling for me. Wow. Damien Dame, sex. No, what was I, it? I, sexing I you up. Nineteen ninety six. Nineteen ninety six. Damien. Nineteen ninety six. He completely changed his image. He went like, and he looks like a grunge dude on the cover with the lip ring and the glasses right. and the mi- the middle part. Or... And then there's like these fake like uh, radio show interviews on. There's, like, oh, two like of a bunch them. of skits. Like, sketch. That, yeah, I, it sounds it's like a so, great album. It's so good, dude. The whole thing's solid. I love it. I'm, I love I'm listening song. this immediately. And it's we're, we're after, it, right after, after on this, the, right after the mandatory Chris Gaines. That's your Chris Gaines. Yeah, right after the workout Gaines. mix. Yeah. Coffee, Chris, Chris Gaines coffee Gaines and Chris. Gaines yeah. maxing with Chris I'm, Gaines. I'm going to make those little boots. KJ Valium uh, wants to know what your cat's name is. Oh, Luna. Adorable. Luna. Yeah, I got, I got a bunch of cats. Hell yeah, we got a we got a buddy. Nyoka Shoje has like five cats. Well, it's a problem here. People move out of places and then they just leave their cat. Yeah, it's kind of so, fucked. Yeah, it's real fucked. So, it's like, not very nice have, at like, all. 
No, it's really mean. And like, uh, so we have two other cats that from our old place that someone left be before us that we took, we adopted. Now we got a fourth cat. Oh, good on you, bro. Someone, yeah, we got good four man. cats now. Yeah. Save the cats. Everyone loves dogs. Everyone do adopts dogs. Like, go get some 15 year old cat and give it some, like, a good three years. Give it a good life. Passes. Yeah, man. Like, stop getting kittens and shit. Get some old cat. Name it Riga Mortis. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Name it Riga. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brent. Life. How important is fan feedback to you? It's very important. Hell yeah. Yeah. You're going to make that Weather Channel album. I know, man. I'm yeah, so like if, you're, if your fans <laughs> told you like they wanted something real bad, like I imagine it might influence you to want to do it. Yeah, or man. Or if they told like, you they liked something <laughs> in particular. Strip yeah, Strip Science uh, says Ricky, Ricky Mortis. We can call him Cat Ricky Mortis. Yeah, Ricky Strip Mortis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, yeah, I think I feel like, uh, you know, that, that's why I like people that comment on youtube and shit because it's like K kj's telling you to join the signal wave community that's true you should be get in there with the new album true yeah i mean if true. you like ambient and drone shit you know echo jams that's like the new yeah 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 i've, I've been One hearing more about experimental this. sides of the vaporwave scene no i think it's cool is making like sampling stuff and making it like um ambient music from sampled bass is Cool as shit. Um, there's some people that do that. I can't think of the name. But I think the guy passed away or something that would make this really good vaporwave ambient stuff. I can't remember their name though. Um, um, I have to look. But yeah, if it know. comes to you, definitely, uh, definitely shout that shit out. Yeah. Cause that's that's like some I like I like the ambient more ambient vaporwave stuff, um, for sure. I know a telepath side project, lot a lot of stuff. You're not you're not talking he, he, you're not you're not the talking virtual about virtual dream Lin, plaza. Uh, you're not talking about uh, Lin's heaven, are you? No, um, I think it's like three words or something like that. Lin's heaven, said, is Lin's heaven Lin's virtual Lin's plaza. Lin's heaven virtual plaza is three words. Or human nightmare. Mm. Human Nightmare and Lin's Heaven Virtual. Shout out, Lin's, shout out both of them, actually. Uh, tremendous losses and tremendous artists. You might be thinking of Lin's Heaven Virtual Plaza. Yeah. They is, would be around it, your time. Did they pass away? Yeah, they did. Yeah, so that's that's who I'm talking about then. Yeah, there's three. Yeah, they, and their, their body of work is extensive. and That shit's out of control. And I really like um, Telepath. It's very different. Too. Like, yeah. Telepath's great. Pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah they, they have, have uh, what is it, Virtual Dream Plaza. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kinda yeah, it's like crazy the, how many of these names are so similar. Lin's <laughs> Heaven Dream yeah, is, is who you're, you're thinking of, and they have an outstanding body of work. It covers a lot of what you're talking about. Yeah, it's very ethereal. Oh, very yeah, nice, for sure. Very nice, lush, you know, good good, good music for sure. Especially stuff to fall asleep to. Like, the right. Right. Yeah, like bed night, like good nighttime, late night music. Everybody, go listen to Lin Seven again because it's very good, good work, and it's good to keep keep them, you know, their memory alive. Yeah, that's keep very unfortunate. Well. Let's, let's yeah. add them to the list too because they did. You check out Human Nightmare as well. They did beautiful work, and it's no longer with us as well. Whose mother keeps their memory alive in like the most yeah way possible? It's adorable. It's a wonderful person who I, you know, I, I, know, I know many of us have met. So without running over time, we are down to five minutes left for tonight's broadcast. Ooh. We like to spend the last five minutes kind of giving you the floor before we talk about what we're doing and introduce next the next guest. Um, we want to give you a moment to shout out anyone or anything you want or do some self-promo or just put people on. Just talk, talk about yourself. Well, I want to thank you guys for having me on here first and foremost because of i feel course. like i've just been chilling with the boys you know <laughs> good yeah, we That's told you cool. i told you yeah like I, we I, told I, you man yeah it was sick man it was just you guys are cool like it was just like uh, i like already kind. know you I already know you come, you know what i mean hang out in the discord yeah absolutely yeah um, 
What I, I really want to promote is that me and my friend who goes by Christ Dice, who's worked with me a lot on the Bong City stuff, we've been working on this album the past year called Smoker. Uh, that's going to be the name of the band. It's Smo Smoker. And in the next couple of months, we're going to drop this album that we've been working on for about a year now. Um, Hell we yeah. We don't like to do the music uh online so i ha we have to fly to like new york and we'll Whoa, we started in there only Mar work together irl or, uh, yeah we only work together irl because then we can do hard. stuff live and shit like that yeah so it's it's taken a, a little bit longer than i'm used to because it's been long distance and i've never done this with somebody with friends. and they're like one of my best friends so it's it's sick Too to cool. work yeah like to do that and uh yeah i'm just I'm, I'm stoked. Uh, I got a lot of stuff I'm gonna put out before the year ends. So, you watch my YouTube channel. So we got at Bomb, Bomb City. City. Yeah. Your collab with Christ Ice. Yeah. The um, what was it, Daryl? Daryl Straits. Daryl Straits. Which is the story behind Daryl is that when I was in rehab, this guy asked me if I ever heard uh, Color TV by Daryl Straits. And everyone started fucking laughing their asses off, and some dude. Dire asked, Are you, he's like, uh, he's Darryl like, yeah, you Street. mean M Money for Nothing by Dire Straits? And the guy Straits, is like, yeah. Daryl Color Straits. TV. Color oh TV fuck, by... I just got that. Color yeah. TV. Yeah. yeah. You ever heard that's Color cool. TV by Daryl Straits? Darryl no, that's a song. So that's the whole. So <laughs> that's I think great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be transitioning the Daryl stuff to multimedia. Yeah, it is. Me neither. I was like, man, this guy's got some titles. Um, straight. And then the, yeah, great. I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing physical copies of my tapes and Good. get some of my the my buddies stuff. to start recording albums so I can help them put out albums too, and then we can just take all that money and put it towards like vinyl or something like that, you know? Because I feel like I'm friends with a bunch of people that are very talented and like no one even knows who we are what we're doing we get like two monthly listeners you know nice. so like uh it's not like we what we're doing is bad you know what i mean we just don't have you just got unified uh, yeah enough exposure and you know getting co comfortable with doing more promotional stuff because people always like you know it's kind of cringy but like if, if, how are you gonna ever get you know uh what is like uh hungry mouth doesn't get fed without saying something or whatever yeah. they're saying. Yeah, squeaky wheel gets uh, the great. grease. Some yeah. kind of spoon, I guess. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, I don't know how the yeah. metaphor works, but... Yeah, man, I've been, I've been making music for... since 2002. 2024. Crazy, huh? 20, Hell yeah. 22 like, years of music. Yeah. Crazy, yeah, right? So, so I'm, I'm stuck to be given this opportunity. I haven't had an interview since the Baltimore Sun. Yeah, like that's right. Or something like that. So this is sick to be Thanks on here. Thanks for saying yes. Um, you guys are, Dude. you know, integrated into the scene very nicely, and uh, you get you're good people. You're not like oh, you're too other... good. Yeah, oh, man. Like that's why that. I kind of had to take a step Bro, back. We try. Because there's been too many shitty, dickhead, mean people ah. in this in this community. That, 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 and it came to a point where it was like, I don't even want to be part of it anymore. But, you know, I feel like I'll always make it, no matter if it's popular, if it's not popular, I'm still going to always be uploading this kind of music to my YouTube Good. channel. Yeah, man. It's tough. I'm, I've dealt with There's... the shitty people. I've dealt with shitty people as well. But, you know, you can't, like, let the shitty people discourage you too much. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been cut doing them this all, for... You cut them off and you move forward. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I've been doing this too long. They deserve, they don't, if they're shitty to you, if they're shitty to you, if they try to hurt you, they don't. They just don't deserve you in the first place. They don't deserve any of the help you've given. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. 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 The deal they, they, I've had one or two people rip you off, turn you off the scene forever, you know? Keep it moving. Moving. Skelly, do you want to talk about anything? Okay, cool we don't, we don't, we don't give the, we don't give no, no oxygen to, the, to that. We don't give no <laughs> That's facts. That's what's up. You got anything cool going, going on or coming up, Skelly? Any shows um, you'll be playing anytime well, soon? Just, drops. We just did the, I just did the Witch House show, Eclipse. Um, my True Witch House with uh, DJ party. John Cena. Yeah, with yes, uh, the uh, Riot Nerd Gang over in Philadelphia it was a wonderful success at Milk Boy. The next it one will probably good. not be a month or so. Um, aside from that, I'm just getting the, the album together. It's done. When does it drop? It's got a home. 
I gotta don't it. have a release you know, date that. yet. I mean, honestly, like I need secret schools to get back to me about the yeah. layout stuff, and I gotta figure out a way. Like speaking of uh, hungry mouth doesn't get fed without a spoon or whatever the fuck we were talking about. Like like um, I gotta I gotta figure out. I'm just gonna go shop around for some sort of like publicist or something. I'm gonna see what that's all Hell about. Hell yeah. See if I can come up with anything. Report back to you when I figure out. That's actually a thing that works these days. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I, got, I, uh, I just I go. I've had a lot of luck just just yeah, not even good. networking. Like, just right? you know, yeah. No, I I need I need to give it a proper listen. But a, what I scanned through, I really liked. Um, I just played three shows, but now I don't have any. So if you would like me to start your party, please book me. I won't let you down. Um, you can ask lots of people. So that's it for me. Nothing. <laughs> um, nah, but, you know, hey, it's summertime. I've heard some rumblings of some possible cool things happening that I won't repeat because I don't have any concrete. Uh, in for oh, yeah, Vapor Shave is coming up at some point. Uh, to be yet announced, but I've got a, a 